Senator, I'm heading into Voss now. What should I know? I'm glad you made it here. I'm still having nightmares about those awful creatures Rogan sent to attack me. It won't be easy to find out who he's working with here. We barely have diplomatic relations with the Voss. Start from the beginning. All I remember is something about cyborg attack beasts in the Force. We know the beasts Rogan uses are Voss species. What we don't know is who helped him implant the cybernetics or ship them off-world. But it'll be a lot of politics for you to navigate to get that answer. Voss was only discovered a few years ago and promptly handed the Empire its head when it tried to attack. The Republic's desperate to get them as allies. Was there a chance they're siding with the Empire? You wouldn't think so, after the Empire attacked them. But since they were defeated, they've been making nice. That's the thing. No one really knows the Voss. But they took down an Imperial battlecruiser without breaking a sweat. And when you ask them, all they say is, the mystic showed us what must be. Speaking to you, Flagant. What? The whole planet follows a bunch of quacks? Don't call them that. The mystics are powerful force users. They have visions of the future which they use to rule Voss society unquestioned. And the Voss have made it clear. Break one law, and the entire Republic can be thrown off this world. I won't take any risks that would hurt the Republic. Why do I doubt that? I've arranged for a native guide, a diplomat named Lokir Ka. He'll be waiting in a private room off the shuttle bay. I sent him files on the beasts that attacked me. I hope he can help you track who sold them. Yeah, this is the armor, the full armor suit we got from doing all the dungeons, by the way. We have a cape now. And this helmet is really stupid looking. Naturally, I'm keeping it because it's really stupid looking. So yes, welcome to Manon 2. Although at least the Voss aren't solely dependent on their neutrality to, you know, function. As I talked about a few times during the KOTOR runs, the, the Manon situation was never really tenable long term. Voss, by contrast, actually has a decent amount of military might and the ability to predict the future. Well, thank you, as always, Flodikos. Appreciate your presence and your support. We'll put that towards dealer choice. Um, so I predict the cape will glitch in Voss. Anybody want to make any guesses on that? Because the cape... So for those of you not aware, Tor has a very long-standing bug where anything flowing, like that cape, will glitch and, like, get stuck inside your legs. In fact, we've already seen that uh, several times. I tend to avoid outfits with capes, specifically to avoid that bug. But, welcome to Bath. I've never even heard of it, Latario. Seriously. Eh, let's just play this music. It does happen in STO, yeah. I really don't know why that's such a common bug. Uh, here we are. Hey, Ten Headed. Hey, Dr. Winter. Oh, wow. Shadow Machine apparently has not done the boss primary. Hold up a minute. Commander Harada, Station Security. Glad I caught you before the shuttle. I have an urgent message from Ambassador Janik, our envoy on Voss. I'll patch him through now. Okay. I'm sure you all have important business, so let me say up front that my request won't interfere. It might even help. Negotiations with the Voss have stalled, and I'm looking for high-profile help. Are you familiar with the planet? I'm interested in an ambassador's take. Ambassador, soldier, Jedi, civilian. We're all outsiders to the Voss. They have little knowledge of the greater galaxy and only recently obtained space flight from us, but they're not primitive. Their society revolves around the mystics, force users who have visions of the future. Those visions guide every decision the Voss make, and the Voss believe they're never wrong. Is that all the mystics can do? See the future? Mystics can also become gifted healers. A Republic alliance with the Voss could be key to winning this war. Unfortunately, the Empire has the same idea. So far, the Voss have refused to take sides, and they've established rigid neutrality laws to keep us in line. The Voss have to protect themselves. Good. 
I spend too much time defending Republic citizens who get into scrapes with Imperials. We need to show the Voss that the Empire only acts respectful because of the mystics. I'm doing everything I can to expose them, but the Voss don't seem to hear me anymore. A fresh face might help. I'm willing to represent the Order. The Jedi are the closest we have to a mystic. I can't hurt. I'm staying in a Voss survey outpost, keeping an eye on the Empire. Commander Harada can handle the details of getting here. Not much to arrange. Shuttle will take you to Voska, their capital city. Local transport can get you to the survey outpost. Remember, the Voss keep all outsiders confined to the alien enclave, regardless of affiliation. Someone makes trouble, ignore them. Well, okay. That sounds a lot like Manon. If anybody breaks a step foot out of line, we're gonna kill y'all. What if they break out of the line trying to make us break out of line? Well, then it's on you! You should have known better. You're not supposed to react when a bully pushes you. I hate that mentality, by the way. I was told that so long, for so many years while growing up. Hated that. Hated that so much. Oh my god. I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about, especially anybody who was born in the United States. Right? Like, there's no excuse for defending yourself. They don't say it that way. But that is what they mean. Anyways, before we move forward a little bit, let's see what we got here. Um, wow, we haven't read these. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I want to thank you again for getting the Hawkeyes out alive. They didn't deserve what Rosario did to them. Daddy here is out of commission. I'm sure the commander was steam, but he'll get over it when we show him what we've been working on. Here's a little preview of what we can do. Thanks. Jeez Louise, I haven't been reading my mail lately. Um... I wanted to thank you again for getting the hawk out I, alive. I feel like I already read that one. Bummed your frequency off some resistance fighters. Hope you don't mind. Thought I'd thank you for getting those supplies back for me and getting a piece of the Corvani. My old girl was really something, wasn't she? Figured since I was stuck here, might as well make myself useful, so I started making runs for the locals again. Turned out to be a pretty nice gig. Even started to get fond of this junker they got me flying. I call her the Corvana. Oh, almost forgot. The Resistance claimed another warehouse, reclaimed another warehouse last month. Pass along some extras I owe to you. Thanks. First off, let me apologize. When the Barrage or Laboratory went up in flames, we ran so quickly from the chaos, I didn't get, you get a chance to properly thank you. I'd like to remedy that now. You'll be pleased to hear we've begun rebuilding. We've even gotten help from Dr. Ordis himself. You may remember him, one of the weapons designers. He sends his thanks for rescuing him from the Gorinth Brig. From the stories he tells... I'm glad you're able to destroy that place, too. Life's getting to be a rather routine again, but I think I've had all the adventure I need for a lifetime. Thank you, truly. Senator Dodonna. On behalf of the Republic, I thank you for securing the Nebula Weapons shipment. I know the mission was both difficult and dangerous. This is Balmora, by the way. But it was vital for the Republic's continued survival. Patriots like you are winning this war. We are grateful for your service. General Var Suthra, the man who originally founded Project Nebula, Ask me to convey his personal thanks for ensuring the Empire did not gain advantage that is rightfully ours. The attached gift is from him. He hopes it serves you well. It's just random stuff. Meanwhile, on Quesh, please report the situation on Quesh remains relatively stable. Although I'm still trying to come to grips with Major Trigg's betrayal. He was a brilliant tactician, but he never understood the value of careful consideration before taking action. I never imagined he lusted so strongly after the war that he'd join the Empire. Fortunately, your presence thwarted his plan. The Republic needs more individuals like you, and I'm proud to know we're on the same side. From Hoth. Thank you again for saving the geothermal plant, and for defending us so magnificently. You've been an inspiration to all of us. The defense system to protect the plant is progressing very well indeed. When we can finally settle on Hoth, my people will have a safe haven with all the power they can need. Please take this. You've done so much for us. It's the least we can give. Losses. From the Hailstorm. We're keeping an eye out for any resurgence of the Brotherhood, but it looks like they're going to stay scattered. Thanks again. You do some good work. I suspect I won't be on Hoth much longer. Meeting Captain Byron got me thinking more about the war. It's getting harder and harder to ignore our forces, to order our forces against Imperials, when I know at least one of them was an honorable man who could be reasoned with. I'm considering a transfer to the Diplomatic Corps. If there's Imperials out here who are willing to talk, there should be Republic who are out there willing to listen. 
I'm finally away from Hot. I've got a whole team helping with the repairs to the Null Cannon. <laughs> Fixing this thing won't be easy, of course, but we're not about to give up. Living through that ice nightmare kind of put things into perspective, you know what I mean? Anyways, thanks for the help. Those Tabana gas miners never knew what hit them. We raided a dozen mining ships and knocked over a refinery. We only had one case of mutiny. That man took a permanent vacation to Deb Bespin's core. I can get used to being a pirate queen. It was a good shakedown cruise, but our next target needs to be more high profile. Maybe one of those fat cat luxury liners? The security on him's tight, but the payoff. Ooh. P.S. Trick says hello. I think he's having fun. Yay. The Narshada Exchange salutes you, Captain. We've had a hit out on Roscuro the Hut for months now, but nobody's able to get anywhere near that Sleemo until you did. The cartel is blocking our expansion into organ trafficking, but now they're too busy arguing over his replacement to mess with us. Business is booming! We may have had our past differences, but know that you have friends in the exchange. I don't want friends in the exchange. Special Investigation Committee officially condemned Senator Tudos for pitting the prisoners on Bill Savas against each other in his arm experiments. He has been stripped of a position and publicly disgraced, though he won't serve any hard time. I don't think I would have reported him if you hadn't backed me. The last thing I need is a politically powerful enemy. Thank you for helping me to do the right thing. Well, we found some useful items on his personal effects. Here you go. Deputy Warden Grawl is as good as his word. As promised, he gave me and the other condemned a small plot of land on Belsamus, far from the prison. Here we live a simple but honest life, no longer punished for the crimes of our ancestors. You saw the justice in our cause and supported our emancipation. We can never truly repay you for that, but we'd be honored if you'd accept some small form of our gratitude. Now that things on Belsavis are more under control, I sent a team to take some readings down in the vaults. Happy to say they didn't find anything out of the ordinary. No sign of the world razor. Whatever crazy plan they had in mind, looks like you put a stop to it for good. My team did find a small storage vault, which had this. Thanks, I think. Whoops. Well, I didn't mean to take drugs. But now that I have taken drugs, there's only one thing to do. Kill! Drugs. 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 Are you Loki or Ka? Indeed. May the mystic see no shadows on you, Captain, and the duty to all weigh lightly. I am your honores. Your translation might be chaperone. All right, then. What do I do to avoid pain of fiery torture or whatever it is you do here? Your mission has touched a nerve. The creatures that attacked your Senator Dadana are a Gormak abomination. Any idea how an off-world gangster got his hands on those things? No. The Gormak are creatures of war. They create these monstrosities from beasts, set them against us. To spread Gormak creations past the stars violates every law. If someone's breaking the law, then point me to the criminals. Voss do not commit crimes. If you seek criminals, search your people. A settlement in the Minevra Caves, called the Exchange. I thought you didn't allow crime. That's one of the most brutal gangs in the galaxy. Not our concern. They have done no wrong on Voss. <laughs> I have been there. I have an academic interest in off-world music. My trade was with a human named Scratch. Perhaps he can answer your questions. Sure. Yes, Lotario. Look at this city and the boss. So serene. Imagine being able to trust what every word your leaders say. It's been a while since I had that kind of faith in people. Working behind the scenes does that to you. I'm hearing you. I spent years trying to help the Republic win. Did a lot of things I'd rather forget. I see the boss. Secret ops, political ploys. They don't exist for the boss. They don't need them. I keep wondering if I still do. Maybe it's time to walk away. Now that's a bright idea. It's a big decision. Ball strikes me as a good place for a fresh start. 
Oompa Hoopa. I'll think about it. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop this all on you. Thanks for listening. Here, I've had this since my first solo mission. Maybe it'll bring you luck. Thanks. Hey, you like all those generic answers I just gave? That was like three in a row, if you're paying attention. Where's the... Hmm. My map is being weird. Hold on a second. Vehicle pads are currently open for business. That's... Uh... Have a safe and pleasant stay. Yeah, my map's being weird. We're just gonna assume it's up here, because it should be. It's time for a bloodbath, Drathon. Oh, sorry, sorry. Murder and mayhem await. You're about to see a real-life hero in action. Good night, Ten-Headed Hydra. Have a good one. Really? Where's the... Why is this up there? Okay, whatever. Yeah, a literal bloodbath. There won't be a heart left beating. Yeah, it's just... You get used to the typical ones. You really do. Um... Recently, Dr. Winter had a theory that's in Cyberpunk 2077, the memories of Johnny you lived through have been modified by Arasaka. Things like the absence of Black Hand is cited as an example. But also, Rogue rides a motorcycle only manufactured decades later. I thought that was merely oversight. Yeah, that sounds like just oversight to me. Honestly. Now, this is quest flow, Jay Palmer. Although, Voss's map isn't great, but... No planet has a good map. Ross asks, is the racing jet bike the most boring part of Chrono Trigger? Not counting the DS version? Yes. What if Vichy didn't want to devour the galaxy, but wanted the Sith to dominate the galaxy? Well, then he'd be a typical Sith Lord. Probably still a stupid character, though, if we're being honest with ourselves, because Vichy... The real problem with him is that in vanilla, let's not, let's not look at the expansions for a moment, in vanilla, he is an incredibly generic non-character. And that's the problem. Regardless of his past, or his perspective, or the North Tenebrae thing, or the eating the galaxy thing, or any of that crap, he is just a non-character. And that is ultimately why I tend to spit so much venom at him, because he's just boring. If he was just ejected from the game and there was no Emperor, and all the Dark Council are just paying lip service to the idea, that would actually be improve my opinion of the whole sequence. Like, he's arguably not even in Vanilla, but that's... Yeah, These we'll accusations are ridiculous. The Republic has only tried to protect the galaxy from the Empire. The Empire offers more power and protection than the Republic ever could, minus the rigid codes of morality. The Empire forgets. The Voss protect themselves. Let us pause here. I believe the Ambassador has some introductions to make. Lord Beldis, speaking on behalf of the Empire. Laren Kai, Envoy to the Three. I'm honored to make your acquaintance. Ambassador Janik asked for this meeting. One might even say he was desperate for it. I'd like to show the Voss something different. An example of everything the Republic stands for. Really? A band of fugitives wanted for their crimes against the Empire? I think we both know that's not true. Outsiders lie. Off-world conflicts mean nothing. The Voss look forward. Outsiders look back. I will say no more. That's... An excellent example, Ambassador. Weak and hopeless. Like you. Okay. The more Lord Beldis talks, the worse the Republic looks. We have to show the Voss what Sith like him are really after.
I'm not even sure where to start. We know Lord Beldis has spies in Voska. Our scouts think he's using some defunct Vos Com towers to communicate with them. The Com logs could prove Lord Beldis has designs against the Vos. I need someone to make it past the Empire's defenses. Isn't a firefight worse than spying on someone? If it doesn't disturb the peace or threaten the Voss, they don't concern themselves with it. Get those comm logs quick as you can. I'll be waiting. Yeah, honestly... The only benefit, really, to going after the Voss and insisting on getting them as allies is to deny them as allies to the other side. Now, you could argue that's a valuable thing, and I'm not going to argue against that, but I'm just pointing it out because, honestly, the Voss shouldn't be a player on the field. Frankly, they arguably aren't a player on the field. Uh, now, Space Cadet says, If these guys can see the future, why don't they know the Sith will double-cross them? I'm actually not going to answer that, because the game will. So, stay tuned is my answer to that. And yes, I have noticed that, Latario. Or did notice that? I guess it's a better way to phrase that. I'm not sure why they got rid of the symbols. Bad design, maybe? I don't know. We are doing Jedi Knight next. Because it is the most likely to be the next bad. Or the next worse, rather. I... I don't have high hopes for night. So that's how I'm going to phrase that. That is how I approach things, Trithon. Knight will be doing Tython, and then just the, the class quests. And then when we get to Consular, we will just be doing the class quests. Yeah, STO... Uh, in fairness, once, you know, that quest arc is out, <laughs> you know... Right? One of these days we'll do the Terran stuff. Come on, there we go. I... Okay. We'll talk about this more when we start up night, probably next week. But... I have had an argument in my head for years as to which is worse, Trooper or Knight. I intend to settle that definitively during this review. Aguatopi basta wahota. Chobut e cuffs to an dile jihulo kuta. Pioa ituta od mishka, boshuda tua bo. So you know something about Rogan that's worth knowing? Kuchusa yo mata chitoya, asubi mota uipa. Mana matota jispa micho. Tamka chirulia kimada? I assume you're not offering anything for free. Manchi do ti puna puna, kabuk nuni slemo. Chatungi ma chechu, i kutsig nang kihe. Won't be the first dangerous ruins I've been in. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Won't ki ata chakapa tonka, jisa picha. Poyatuka Changa Goptula do Batawana Wanki Tonight I drive around in a night. Hammond drives around in a trooper, and May drives around in a consular. We'll find out which one of them is the worst class. Down, 
I have not seen bottom gear, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little familiar with, with Top Gear. How familiar with it? Well, every now and again, my friends and I would want to just rewatch it, just for fun. And it was such a commonality that in order to say, would you like to go watch Top Gear, they would say, hey, you in the mood for... I know I was off-key there, but you get my point. Love that show. Anyways. Chop again. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, 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 chop. Some say he once romanced a Republic senator. Also had sex with a warden on a prison planet. All while romancing the queen of... I forget the name of the planet. All we know is... He's called the smuggler. Oh, we'll get to Night Story, trust me. Uh, a what, Shadow Machine? Oh, you're right, I should be using that. Sorry, I, I did so much to speed up the the trooper arcs that I've, I've forgotten that I could speed up S Smuggler. Ugh. In my defense, I'm fighting off a really bad headache. I just took a second pain pill to be like, you know what? Let's get out of my head. Just go. Cool. Spin this all you like, Ambassador. You tempered with Voss communication towers. Is that a fact, Lord Baldus? I suppose I forged the Imperial comm logs that came out of them, too. Stop. Neither were present. Both are blind. Those involved will answer. Did you strike against Voss? My goal was to protect the Voss from the Empire. Your protection is destructive. The towers were abandoned. No Voss were harmed. This will not happen again. I can personally guarantee that, Laren Kai. You against the Empire, and me against Lord Beldis. I'm not sure which fight was harder. That was so easy I fell asleep doing it. I'd trade jobs with you if I wasn't sure we'd both die quickly. The comm logs don't implicate Lord Beldis directly, but they prove he has Imperial spies in Voska. One of them is Malcolm Terax. Terax is one of Imperial Intelligence's best agents, but now he'll be executed. We can't let that happen. You think an Imperial spy will help us? If we save Terax, he might talk. The SIS spotted a new Dusk Squadron camp nearby. They're Imperial assassins, and their location is perfect for a quiet execution. I'm willing to bet they're here for Terax. I can't believe I'm rescuing an Imperial. I have to smile and play nice with a Sith Lord. I completely understand. I'll make the arrangements for a deal with Terax. I just hope he's still alive. Rest your hand, Giga. I understand completely. A friend of mine can only play video games with us periodically because of hand issues. Uh, speak English! She's a Kavakaya Topa. I get the feeling there's something you're not telling me. What, Dr. Winter? I'm just... I'm sick of the random nonsense. That's really what it is. You hear it a lot in this game. And they just... Uh, I get why they do it. I just don't care. Was there some type of warning or message? I would quite literally rather that the nonsense scenes were just text and no voice acting at all instead of, you know, four clips of nonsense being played over and over again. Now granted, this is nowhere near as bad as it was in KOTOR, to be clear. Or KOTOR 2. 
KOTOR and KOTOR 2 were extremely bad about that. They had what? Two different voice clips for Ithor Ithorians? Because that... Oh my god. There's a reason the Geltha thing became such a damn meme. Uh... Cell cat. Yeah, you like the sound of someone grating their vocal cords on a cheese grater, right? <laughs> Just doing that hurt my throat. Jesus. Anyways, point being, speak English! Wah. And by English, I actually mean basic. Speak basic! Listen, if you want to be part of intergalactic society, then speak basic. That's the rule now. Everybody, I'm going to take over the galaxy, and we're not going to do any pogroms, no genocide, none of that crap. We're just going to force everyone to speak basic. That's the rule. J101 guy. No! <laughs> Just shoot them. They're dead. Yeah, you know what vaguely irritates me? Revan being able to understand multiple languages was supposed to be a plot point, but the overwhelming majority of characters in Star Wars just understand, like, every language they encounter. It's like the Universal Translators without the translators existing. They, they just know this, the language. Somehow. <laughs> I gotcha! I mean, part of the problem is they want to have multiple languages, unlike Star Trek. But they don't want to have the Universal Communicator, unlike Star Trek. So... Like, there's a contradiction here, is what I'm trying to say. Hatiz is very common. Hatiz is basically basic, too. I don't know why I said basically. Hatiz is basic, too. Yeah, protocol droids. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's how Revan did it, Latario. Anyways. Uh, let's see here. Isn't seeing the future something that's mostly for light-sided users? That's a good question. And that's all I'm going to say to that. Because we'll cover that more when we get to the Jedi Knight arc. I've ever seen a media where a chosen one is corrupted by being the chosen one. Dune. <laughs> Other than that, I can't think of an example of that. Hang on, Mr. And I haven't seen anything you've linked. I am I am too terrible to read and read at the same time, apparently. <laughs> My friend is going to get you! No, Frodo doesn't count. Alright, hang on. So let's scroll up a little bit. Padding issues with the last boss, which is boss. Visibility issues with Rola in Dead Ends. Don't even know what that is. Dead Ends. What the hell is the Dead Ends? Yeah, that's another thing. Understanding droid... I thought it was supposed to be rare that people understood droid. That counts a lot. The... Ah, right. Uh, so that would be dungeons, then. That would be terrible, Polycos. Like, it would be... It, that's one of those things that would be funny for, like, ten seconds. And then you'd just mute the game for the rest of it. 
because it would grate on your ears. That being said, in the Star Wars rewrite, obviously we're going to go with the protocol droid's answer. Duh. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, uh, is something dull the absence of a positive? Whoa! Or is it a negative? It, it actually kind of depends, Dimashi. But something that is boring is usually a negative. Something that's boring story-wise, something that's boring gameplay-wise is something that's taking up my time and not providing anything in return. Now, something that's inoffensive is different. Something that's just there. But something that's actually dull, that's pretty much always a negative. And granted, it's it's kind of, it's always a guessing game whether something is, you know, dull, or whether something is inoffensive, because those two are very close to each other. What the hell was SGE? I don't even remember what SGE is. Either way, I'm still going to say that goes under bosses for the SGE thing. Whatever it is, it's bosses. Ah! Hi! Yeah, exactly, Xavion. It's a dull... Ugh. Yeah, dull grates on you, but more to the point. Dull also... Dull's just a waste of your time, you know? Jedi power. I don't have a lot of time to waste. Ah, um... Put that under HUD, Mr. Red. That's one of the reasons I'm so harsh about intros, Gerondolfi. That's why I'm so damn harsh on intros and outros. The thing that hooks you, and the thing that sticks with you after you're done. They need to be better than your standard gameplay, period. Higher standards. That's we established that protocol years ago, and I've stuck by it ever since. Well, let's see. Uh, do I think it was a better choice to have all the races of Mass Effect speak English? Yes, and I mean that. What they basically did was the Star Trek thing, but honestly, the problem with with language. Let, let's actually discuss this for a second. The, the language problem is what you're doing is you're fighting between two mutually exclusive goals. You either want your work to be as realistic as possible, or as parsable as possible. If everyone spoke their own languages, and everyone, you know, all, all these alien languages, you have all kinds of issues. Dakota brings up a, a perfect one I didn't even think about. The voice actors don't speak that language. It is actually quite difficult for someone to speak in a made-up language and still act. Right? That's that's a thing. You put them in English, or whatever their, you know, particular language it is. So, in their native language, something they actually speak, then they can act. They understand intonation, tone, how to speak, why to speak, when, etc., 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 right? So, that's point number one. Point number two is that we, the audience, can hear all of that crap. We actually can tell what they're saying. It's just kind of dubs versus subs. But the fact remains that we can actually tell what they're saying without having to read subtitles the entire time. Which brings me, of course, to point three. I'll, I'll get to point three in a second. Let's, let's get on with this. Um, who, are we, who are we missing? Orcano! Orcano, no! We lost Orcano. We literally lost Orcano. Damn it. But while we wait. So. 
let's let me use a made up example for a second. Let's say that I say something happens on August thirteenth. Now, what does that mean to you? Just immediately. Now, let's say I say something happens on the 5th of Morning Thaw. What does that mean to you? Again, immediately. Malcolm Terex, the Republic's offering you a pardon in exchange for information. Cavalry's come as it. But maybe I don't like your terms. The things I know are worth more than my life. What makes you think I'll share any of them with you? You will cooperate or you will die. You have no <laughs> idea which one is worse, do you? I help you. I forfeit my nice, quick shot to the head. The Empire will hunt me down and make me pay. So for the Republic to give me a fighting chance, I'll need credits, supplies, and transport off-world. Sure. Betray me and you'll regret it. Jesus. We'll just have to trust each other, won't we? Safe in the arms of the Republic. And then she immediately kills him. Yeah, Shadow Machine's just pure evil, apparently. If you ever wanted to see evil consular, I think we're getting a sight of that. Anyways. I, I'm, I have too much of a headache to explain my point properly, so please forgive me. There's a... Oh, you're a knight? My bad. There's a... An automatic layer between the viewer or the player or the reader and the work if you add on made up crap, right? Now that's true in general, but if. Right, porting, thank you for reminding me. Um, uh, port to where? Oh, there was. But yeah, like, replacing the calendar, replacing the language, replacing the uh, distances or time formulas or whatever. Now, there's kind of a gray area in between here, because if you consistently use something in a, you know, in an understandable one-to-one -one manner... Where's the port back? There's no port back. You lied! Oh my god, there is. But yeah, there's that layer of interpretation. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to get at. There's that layer of interpretation between you and understanding or not understanding, as the case may be, what the heck is going on. And so, one of the reasons I tend to be in favor of going full hog on having everyone speak the language that they're speaking, whether it's English or German or French or whatever, is because of the fact that it removes that extra layer. That's I, that's, I shouldn't have brought up the this, the dubs versus uh, subs thing, because that's really kind of a, a, a different concept. The focus is entirely on whether or not you have an extra barrier between you and enjoying the story. And again, yeah, there's 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 in between. There's gradients there. You know, you can consistently use something. You can pepper. You can pepper it with flavor, like you could use uh, very. One of the common things is to have fictional cusses, for example. So instead, of, rather than saying "damn it," they'll be like, you know, "blood, bloody's bones" or something like. I, I can't come up with an example right now, but you get my point. You know, "bosh kill." You know, just have those little bits of flavor, but otherwise, they're still speaking insert language here. I have your artifacts. What is going on here? Pampawula Giota. Don't lie, do it. I'll get you gel on the link. She's Rogan's lady in charge. Got your buyer here. Pull up. The sale goes through. Tell Rogan those credits got my name on them. Then I warn you, this is a unique opportunity. There's nothing like these creatures for sale in the galaxy. Be careful. I'd drive a hard bargain. I'm counting on it. Go away. Go away. 
You understand this is large and unusual cargo with certain transportation issues? Selling it is a capital offense on Voss. You have to buy direct and pick it up yourself. I won't turn down a chance to meet in person. Then I hope you make it here alive. To keep this out of sight of the Voss commandos, we set up shop in the heart of the Gormak war zone. I'll transmit the coordinates now. If you make it here alive, I'll be waiting. I awaited you in Voskar for hours. You were seen everywhere else. If you do not check in, duty requires I accompany you. You never told me to come back. I am Honoress. I cannot guard Voss from your influence if you deal in secret. What have you learned? Scratch hooked me up with Rogan's suppliers. I'll be posing as a buyer. A buyer? Of Gormak abominations? Don't worry. The captain won't actually buy one. What would we feed it? Kunta Chuta. Kaso Yali Kuli Ra. Kanki Kung. I will not interfere unless you break Voss law, but I will come. You can help me find this place. Wonki Ata Chakapa Tonka. Chisa Picha. Agreed. Where? Vota mio krita chobasa. Chi ho poca for krida. Even the mystics dare that not. Piowa ituta od mishka. Boshuda tua. Captain. Oh, I thought I would never find you. The minute I heard you were on Voss, I started searching. I'm certain you have terribly important business. But might you find time to do one small service for a diplomat of the Republic? Uh, me? Somehow these things never end up that small. Just hear me out. Her whole life, my sister suffered from a rare form of Misra Syndrome. She would have died had I not landed this post on Voss. I was able to arrange for her to receive healing from the Mystics. If she's healed, then what's the problem? My sister chose to stay and serve the Shrine of Healing as payment for her treatment. But now, our mother is dying, and I have no way to reach her. The whole path to the Shrine, it's besieged by Gormak. I can pay you handsomely if you would brave the Gormak to bring my sister word to come home. If I find myself at the Shrine, I promise I'll talk to your sister. Thank you, Captain. I believe Kindra serves a mystic named Kina Ray. I pray she lets her leave, and quickly. Mother may not last long. So, I have to also admit, now this is more of a personal preference slash issue. When I hear a language I don't understand, and I've talked about this before with regards to Japanese works in particular. Remember, I had a huge issue with this with the Yakuza series originally. My mind just kind of automatically blanks it out. You know what I mean? I just kind of hear noise. I don't really process what I'm hearing. All my attention is down there on the subtitles and on what they're actually doing. Now, with a real language, I don't have that problem as much because you can tell things like tone and intonation and intensity because they're speaking a real language. So that's not like a negative to the Akazas, for example. But when it comes to something like this, there is no intonation. There's no tone. There's no voice. There's effectively no voice acting happening. I don't mean to sound negative, but like, they're just literally speaking nonsense. It's random clips that happen to be roughly the right length for the dialogue that's being played. That's how they do it. So instead, it's just Incha Dovaiska. I mean, we I've literally already complained about this with Bodar. Because his Chewbacca cries are completely out of out of touch with what he's actually saying because unlike the the Hutti stuff where they have quite a few lines of dialogue the Wookiees they only have like three or four clips real quick thank you Don always appreciate you I'll put that down for death loop I've been waiting for you Malcolm Terax is on a transport bound for Coruscant his price was steep but worth it there's no way Lord Beldis can talk his way out of this Terax was in Vos Ka to identify failed mystics. Lord Beldis is offering them an alternative. Joining the Sith.
What is Lord Beldis planning? Lord Beldis has found the Voss's weak spot. He converts enough failed mystics, and the Empire won't need an alliance. I'd offer an alternative, but the Jedi see the mystics as a threat. The Jedi need to loosen their robes and live a little. Keep that to yourself. Relations with the Order are strained enough. When Terax finds a failed mystic, he sends them to the ruined city, the remains of an ancient Voss settlement. The Sith have a training camp there. If we catch them with the failed mystics, the Voss will have to take notice. I'll show the failed mystics what Lord Beldus really wants. It might be a hard sell. The Voss are devoted to their beliefs. I'd like to talk to the failed mystics myself. Calm me as soon as it's safe. I mean, very little is as bad as T3 speech, because I know what you're talking about, and oh my god, that was awful. Um. That's all over the place now. I should also mention one other thing. There's kind of a, a gradient here. If you were to manually record even a nonsense language specific to the dialogue being spoken, that actually would work better. I know this because that's what the movies actually do. Every time you hear them speaking, we'll use a direct example, Hatiz, they're saying something that has been designed with the actual lines they're speaking in mind, right? Manually crafted nonsense, put simply. So it doesn't sound as jarring. Now, they don't do that here because that would defeat the entire point. The whole reason they do that here isn't just because it's Hutties or because it's Star Wars, it's because it saves them from an inordinate amount of extra time and money in order to record a huge amount of dialogue, right? But yeah, exactly, Jirandolfi. That's why Hutties... I, I don't tend to have issues with Hutties or Wookiees or Rodian or anything else in the movies. Because they thought about it and said, all right, hang on. So what you're going to say is, I can't wait to kill Jirandolfi. So you can come up and say, and there you go. Boom. It just slides in, right? In what way, Lataria? Is this in? This round? Oh, prayer. Oh, kill everything. Um, so hang on. So Lotario asks, what do you think of Mikal, a.k.a. the Disciple from KOTOR 2? Well... If I'm being as nice as possible, I would only give him a negative or two or three or eight or fifteen. Ambassador he's a Janik, terrible character. I'm in the ruined city. There are no Voss here. I'm afraid Ambassador Janik's comm signal has been jammed. He won't be joining us. It's strange. It's almost as if you want the Voss to condemn you. So far, you've stolen files from Voss installations, freed a condemned criminal and done murder in the ruins of an ancient Voss city. An interesting strategy. Stop jerking me around and get to the point. I've given these outcasts a purpose. If one Sith can strengthen a failed mystic, imagine what the Empire can do for Voss. Come see for yourself. Our coordinates are in this console. My acolytes would welcome the chance to show off their skills. If this comes to violence, there's no way you can win. If you strike me down, the Voss will avenge their fallen benefactor. Come when convenient. My acolytes and I look forward to your arrival. The camera angles are just impeccable in this game. Favorite quest in WoW? That's a good question. You still there, Jay Palmer? Whoops. Because there's a lot of really good quests in WoW. Like... Like, holy crap. Let's see if I can avoid getting disarmed here. Nope! Okay. Well, that's cool. So, obviously, there's the, um... Wee quest! That's, that's a great quest. There's the Katamari Damacy quest in, uh... 
I can't think of the name of the zone all of a sudden. Desert place. Oh, that's sad. I can't think of the name of the damn zone. Oldham. Jesus Christ. So there's the Katamari Damacy quest in Oldham, which is fantastic. But that's kind of a silly quest, you know? So we should probably go with something of a more serious quest. Maybe the quest having to do with Arthas in Wrath of the Lich King. It's actually a quest chain, but it's a damn good quest chain. And really messed up when you start to think about it. That's pretty good. But then we've got a couple of other really good quests, like some of the individual character moments that we have in, say, Warlords of Draenor, or even in Legion. But actually, I think... Uh, no obliteration, that's the one. That's the one. But actually, I think I'm going to give it to the very last quest of Pandaria. So for those of you who've never done it, at the very end of Pandaria, uh, actually after you've done the legendary chain specifically, which is canonically the last quest in that series, you go back and talk to Raytheon. And Raytheon is furious at what happened at the culmination of the Siege of Orgrimmar. No spoilers. And yeah, Raytheon and the Pandaren Waiter. That's that's the sequence I'm talking about. But hang on, there's a caveat there. Because the very, very, very last quest is when you go talk to Lord Walker Cho in the in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Right after that event. So the Raytheon thing and the uh the Lord Walker Cho thing. Those are some very good quests. So, we've only had occasional issues with the camera, which is why it hasn't been a negative yet. But I think we're probably at the point where we could probably give a negative just for the camera problem. Now here's a real question, and I mean this with sincerity. Do we give a negative for capes? This game has been out for 11 years. And... Ever since this game first came out, the cape bug has persisted. And I hate the cape bug. It is a bug. It is a graphics visual bug. And it completely ruins any scene in which it happens. The next time the cape bug happens, I'll point it out. I am honestly a little surprised it hasn't happened yet. We've had it happen many times. You remember when I had that little skirt thing? It happened with the skirt thing. Look, Acolytes, another attempt to cast you out, just as I foresaw. That's pathetic, actually. Like the Voss, the Republic has deemed you unworthy. They send their best to kill me and end your instruction. Free the Voss and stand down. Don't let this come to violence. We are free. The Voss refuse us. Lord Beldis is our mentor. As Sith, we have purpose. We have chosen. You follow the visions of your mystics. I doubt they saw this. What have we seen? Combat training, levitation, storms of lightning. Have patience, Acolytes. There are other powers in this galaxy besides Foresight. Who else will share them with you? There are others. The Jedi. The Jedi fear us. We know only their power. Would they teach us? Jedi are waiting for you to ask. We are willing. Republic lies. The Jedi will never let you achieve your full potential. I've given you freedom, true power. I won't allow anyone to take it away. 
Okay. So anyways, he's dead. We good now? Violence without purpose. This is not power. Ah. Sticks are chosen. We let failure overwhelm us. We must find our place. It may be with Jedi. You kids deserve a break. One could say that. We must return. Thank you. I think about it, the more I think I am going to give a negative to the caves. Ignoring the fact that it's a really old bug, which happens a lot, there's also the fact that for years it's also made me deliberately avoid outfits with capes on them in order to avoid that bug because of how much it bothers me. If you remember, it happened all the time during the Sith Warrior run, and I was really pissed off because I liked the outfit that I had, but I couldn't wear it because it had a cape. By the way, you want to hear something really sad? We've talked several times about spaghetti code and how that's a problem for most MMOs. One of the biggest examples I, I like to have liked to use for spaghetti code is Guild Wars 2 and the repair thing. They fixed that recently. Yeah, as in like a couple weeks ago. Pretty much the latest patch fixed the repair thing, finally, in Guild Wars 2. Which means they actually had probably been spending the, the better part of this year sitting down and manually editing a huge amount of item files to finally fix that. Hang on, it's even better than that. They didn't just get rid of durability, which was the main thing. They made it so that every repair station and NPC in the entire game now gives you a buff for interacting with it. Master Delsa, I had no contact with the failed mystics. The Republic had nothing to do with this. Yet the Vos claim your agents promised them a home in the Order. Shall I ask them? Any mystic, even a failed one, is raw, dangerous power. How could you offer them Jedi training? Are you an idiot or just stupid? I'm sure your concerns are unnecessary. The Voss have no concept of the dark side or its dangers. Neither do you, it appears. I've said my piece. Ambassador Janik tells me Laren Kai is on his way. I'll leave you to your diplomacy. I have to admit, when I wished I could force the Jedi to accept the mystics, I didn't think you'd actually do it. Jedi follow the will of the Force. You don't have to deal with the fallout. I didn't think relations between the Order and the Republic could get any worse. No matter how the Jedi feel, the Republic needs this alliance. And you brought us one step closer. Remember that. The lost potentials confirmed Lord Beldus' crimes. I have not come to discuss it. The mystics have a vision. An outsider will end the threat of the Gormak. We believe it is you. I'm honored, but there are a lot of outsiders here. You protected the lost potentials. Our interpreters considered this. The mystics see. The three decide. The Voss act. You are not Voss. Will you follow this vision? I always wanted to be part of a prophecy. A happy coincidence. Ambassador Janik has your instructions. Farewell. A vision of the Republic helping the Voss. What incredible luck. Let's see where they want you to start. Laren Kai is bound by the Mystic's vision, but he wants to be sure you're prepared. He's asking that you complete the Mystic's trials at the Shrine of Healing, something no ordinary Voss has ever survived. 
What would be involved? That's all I know. The trials are part of the mystic's training. No outsider has ever attempted them. You'll need to make the pilgrimage to the Shrine of Healing. The guide, Suva Rock, leads a pilgrim camp near the local transport. You make it through these trials, and the Voss will be more than impressed. I'm counting on you. <laughs> I mean, New World, if you want to get technical, is just a gigantic example of terrible, terrible code. Oh, that was odd. Like, I do not know what they were thinking. There's so much of that. Uh, gosh, I hope not Trathon. That would be terrible. Anyways. <clears throat> so, all I'm going to say is that I just saw the reveal trailer for STO. I didn't call that. I should have, in hindsight. But I didn't. It's the reveal trailer for the next uh, quest, which is going live on the 13th of September. If you want to know more, you're going to have to go watch it yourself. Well, then I'm about to kill you, Zeiss. All right, let's see. So we can beam you down to a hostile planet. And you'll have to use the local materials to make weapons to fight a giant Gorn. Or, we could beam you down to a hostile planet where all your thoughts are made into reality. Or, we could beam you down to a hostile planet where you have to fight your best friend, or they will kill us both. Dial the one, two, and three, Xavion. In that order, no less. All right, hang on. We have to beam Zeiss down to a hostile planet for starting with Discovery. All I will say um, is that I wish... <laughs> I wish I'd called that because the act, uh, the person acting in that role has recently kind of come back to acting. So... Probably should have called that. The data pad. Mysterious boss transmissions are a hoax. No wonder we couldn't decipher them. Someone put a transmitters here. Don't fall for the trick. Oh my god, we're dead. The end. So. Whoop. Imperials! So how do streaminations work? So I'm assuming you haven't seen any of our pre-existing streaminations, but I will go ahead and clarify for you. What happens is you can go ahead and watch the show in question that we're going to cover whenever you want to. However you want to. But I will be watching the episodes immediately prior to... <laughs> immediately prior to covering them. So we start stream at 10 a.m., right? So if it's a 22-minute show at about 9.30, or 8.30, but, you know, whatever, uh, I will go ahead and sit down, watch the episode, and take notes. Then at 10, I go live, and we discuss it. Now, if it's a show that happens to have a 22-minute episode, we'll do two episodes every day. And if it is a show that has 44-minute uh, episodes, we'll do one. Sense make? The format has worked out pretty well, so that's what we're going to do. Now, let's write down Flygand... Non for the STO Terran Gambit. No particular reason. Uh, not quite Jay Palmer. Similar, though. I mean, Jaren Dolphin has the right of it. Imagine you just watched an episode and then you sit down and chat with someone about it. That's that's kind of the streamination format. Like I said, it's a good format and it's worked out really well. That was one of the purposes of the MLP, MLP streaminations was to test the format of streaminations in general. But there's also not a lot of other good alternatives to that. So that's what we're sticking with. 
At least until I conquer the world. Once I conquer the world, we can do whatever. Um, I guess we're done. I don't actually know how long Justified's episodes are. I need to look that up, because that's going to change a few things. So that's there, and that's up there. Okay, so let's go up to this. Um, since I'm such a fan of intros, what was my first impression of the Mass Effect 2 intro? So, without spoiling, I didn't know what was happening in the Mass Effect 2 intro. I know that was all over the place in the marketing, but I wasn't aware of that. So that caught me completely by surprise, and it turned out to be one of my favorite intros in all of gaming. I'm not sure that still qualifies in that heady territory, but it's still an intro I rather enjoy, and when we review Mass Effect 2 in about a month and a half, it'll probably get quite a few positives. Like... Find anything out about my assistants? Yeah, they're dead. The Voss transmissions you picked up were sent by Imperials. When your assistants went to investigate, the Imperials killed them. They're dead? This is my fault. I never should have sent them there. You didn't kill your assistants. The Imperials did. They wanted to disrupt your work. Don't let them succeed. You're right. If I abandon my research, my assistants gave their lives in vain. I can't let that happen. I'll be more careful in the future, but my work here will continue. Thank you for looking into this. I'll inform the next of kin. You're welcome. Listen, nobody needs hair. Yeah, no kidding, Trithon. Good lord. Um, can you fund me taking over the world? Technically? Please select an available travel route. Um, at what point does the Sith Warrior protest surpass Barriss? in power. I would say that by the end, uh, by the beginning, excuse me, of Act 3, they've probably already reached that point. That's just my take on it. It could be argued that they were there earlier, but that's my, that's my feeling. Um, have I ever played Elder Scrolls Online? Not really. Do I prefer this game over that? Probably. Again, I haven't really gotten into it. If I was living in the star, there's a lot of questions from Lotario here. My goodness. Get this cutscene out of the way before we qu question it up. Yeah, I was gonna say that was the end of Act Two, right, Shadow Machine? If I'm remembering correctly. Suvarak. I'm interested in taking the path of pilgrimage. Outsiders are not Voss. They do not follow the path. Even the pilgrims cannot follow now. The danger is too great. The path is blocked. The Gormak kill any who enter. I haven't met anyone who could stalk me yet. Many others must travel the path. The path leads to the Shrine of Healing. Only those who believe may enter. Even mystics walk the path before their trials. The Gormak defile it. I'd be more than willing to clear out the Gormak. It is not enough to spill blood. The Gormak have tainted the path. A Voss must cleanse the shrine. The Gormak will attack. Will you guide a pilgrim? Send the pilgrims with me. I'll keep them safe. The Gormak are predators. Move quickly. I mean, it's already turned into a drinking game for me, Crazy Norse. It's kind of big news. Unlike most of the news we tend to get here, that's honestly big news, so... That doesn't surprise me much. I thought Nomenkar nearly beat Barris in, like, you know, tactics, mental... You know, outspied him. I didn't think Nomen Car nearly physically killed him. Although maybe you're right, because he was in the comics. I don't remember what role Barris had in the comics, though. 
But yeah, exactly, Trithon. The whole world's talking about it. It's kind of hard to avoid it right now. And yeah, very expected. That's the other thing. Everybody knew it was coming. This is not a shock. Which brings us back to the fact that I hope they get Patrick Stewart for Star Trek Online. I agree with that. I... I don't want to sound negative or... Look at the... Look at the capes. Look at the capes. I love it. That's not the cape problem. That's hysterical. I don't want to sound morbid, but I am really happy that we got the final René Bergenois performance in Star Trek Online. He did a damn good job, too. Like, Odo's role in that story arc was fantastic. We came really close to not getting that, if you think about it. Same thing with Aaron Eisenberg. Absolutely. I, I know that sounds like such a strange thing, but... I don't know. A friend of mine died uh, last year, and... She has been immortalized in the Final Fantasy IX theater. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what else to add to that. It's something that's been on my mind as a consequence. But yeah, I, I hope we get Patrick Stewart in STO before we never will. Me too, Gashel. I'm one of those extremely strange people who loves it when something, when someone sees their work appreciated is how I want to phrase that. The, my favorite example of this, and I've, I've brought this out more than once, Pretty sure you won't die. is the gentleman who worked on the localization for Earthbound here in the States. Now those of you who aren't aware of this, Earthbound didn't sell very well in the States, for a lot of reasons we've already discussed. But, um, that particular localizer was one of the pioneers of localization in game design. Did a better job than virtually everyone else in the business was doing. And, as a result, did a bang-up job in a game that didn't sell. A decade later, he's watching people stream Earthbound and gush about it, and talk about it, and share about it. He pops in and talks about it. They're like, oh my god, you're the one who localizes. That's so cool. And that is something that I like. Not the initial, but the fact that he was able to live long enough to see people appreciate the hard work he put into it. You know what I mean? Now you might think, what does this have to do with René Abergenois? Believe it or not, Deep Space Nine wasn't actually that popular while it was coming out. Its viewing figures didn't do great. And most of the reason it was still going and, and had no real issues with regards to funding or problems under the hood was specifically because of the fact that they had the whole Star Trek brand thing they were pushing over on uh, UPN at the time. But Voyager was the flagship show. Deep Space Nine was over there to the side. So it wasn't as appreciated when it came out is what I'm trying to say. Here after all. And I already went and set up another buyer. I assumed you were dead on the trail somewhere. This is my partner. We call him Gormak Zack. He's our pipeline for the precious little beasties. You have the stink of the Voss on you. You are pretty human to me. He's... how do I put this delicately? Gone native. Poor dear doesn't talk to real people much anymore. So, I hardly know what to charge. You're our first client who didn't pay the markup to have the cargo shipped to him. I like a challenge. Me too. The harder, the better. <laughs> but I always come out on top. Which is more than I can say for you. I like a woman who takes charge. Because you don't have the brains to do it yourself. You think I'm fool enough not to recognize Rogan's top bounty? I'm not making the mistake of taking you on one-on-one. -on -one. But when the Voss Commandos find you here trading in abominations... <laughs> I'm sure they'll be happy to pitch in. Listen, 
would it really be Smuggler if we weren't doing terrible flirting, Evo? And yes, DS9 is very bingeable, ironically. More so than most of Star Trek. And yeah, as soon as DS9 hit Netflix, exploded in popularity. Captain, Commando's targeting your location. They speak of an informant who sent them. That blasted hairball set me up. She would trade in abominations, then draw commandos? It's cute how surprised you look. No wonder Rogan thinks Voss is such a gold mine. You can explain the truth. No. With this evidence, I would not listen to an outsider cry innocence. Hold off the commandos, and I'll root out this Gormak smuggling ring. The evidence is strong. It will take months for adjudicators to sort the truth. If I give you time, you must use it to hunt these outlaws. Leave. That passage will take you to the trail. I will tell the commandos the truth I know. Await me in Scratch's shop. Oh, me too, Chester Copperpot. Me too. I kind of can't... Whoops. Can't go back to... Uh, to the DVD copies of TNG anymore. The Blu-rays are just so much better. It's not just video quality, too. It's audio quality. Brilliant stuff. <sighs> um, but yeah, I, I'm sorry. Just finished statement. I'm really happy that several people, including Rene Bergemont, were able to live long enough to see their roles and their their place as Odo in Deep Six Nine, appreciated for the let's call Odo's fantasticness that it is. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Gus. Oh, you dick! He stunned me just so I couldn't make it to the elevator. Yeah, Armin Shimmerman's another one. He's actually started talking about that. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, the, pay attention to the news. There's a lot of talk about a DS9 resurgence series. And Armin Shimmerman's actually got, given interviews on his thoughts on the matter. Because, you know... The man threw himself into the role of Quark, and it worked. So I haven't seen any of the AI upscaling stuff myself. I admittedly tend to be anti-AI upscaling because of reasons, but it'd be interesting to see it. Uh oh, it's up. Right, right, right. Yeah, modern sci-fi. I'd like to think I can write some decent modern sci-fi. I know Evo can, because she has been. Unless you count it as fantasy, in which case it's fantasy. Guess it's time to upscale humanity. Ha ha ha. If I was living in the Star Wars galaxy and my Force-sensitive son... I have a son? Oh my gosh. Said he was going to join the Sith. How would I respond? I'd immediately kill him. Instantly. No hesitation. You tell me, Evo. Is the extant uh, fantasy or sci-fi? Yep, nope, nope, nope. Sorry, son. But father... Nope. Don't love you. You're no son of mine. Remember that time you supported the Raiders? It was just done ironically, Dad! That was one irony too many. Why do you keep shooting me? Dramatic effect. The Gormak plight is gone. You have followed the path. The shrine may be open to you. Tell Garo Mo of this. He guards the proving grounds. The shrine is for the mystics. He may deny you. Just watch yourself. 
The Gorma could come back. We have learned to guard the path. I will inform Suvarok. Good luck, outsider. I mean, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, if my son, let's assume I have a son, if my son is joining the Sith, I have done something extremely wrong. So what I'll do is I'll walk up to my son and be like, alright, listen. Um, what you're about to do is make a huge mistake. Now, you're allowed to make that mistake, but it is my job as your caretaker, regardless of biological imperative, to inform you of the fact that you are about to make a mistake. Then I would kill myself for failing him. Any questions? Oh, outsiders, so curious, like small children. You wish to know Voss history. Is that why you come? To understand? Now I'm all ears. Keep talking. Curiosity implies intellect. Out there are writings of mystics past. Find them. Learn from them. When you return, I will share what I can. We have an understanding, then. I will show you where to go. I, mean, I suppose if you want a real answer, I could give one. But honestly, like, seriously. If my child is joining the Sith, I am a terrible father. Like, there is something wrong with me. My god. I do not deserve to live. Jesus. Blizz is the best companion in this game. Mega Skullmon's Pokemon. To me, fell the task of breaking tradition. I saw a vision. The Empire and Republic destroyed Voss. I told the interpreters. The interpreters have grown lazy. They took the vision. They did not look at details. They called the vision false. Clearly, Voss was not destroyed. I stood on the steps of harmony. If the three did not retrain the interpreters, I would walk out of Vosca. Since the interpreters have since the interpreters have trained better, we protected our art. It was threatened by outside influences. My vision showed it. Yeah, that was a waste of a cutscene. Okay, cool, whatever. We're cool here. Everything's cool. Well, in that case, he needs to die, Latario. Stop shoot me, Dad. Never. I'll never stop shooting you, son. I love you. Why are these cutscenes? What is going on with this Ewok? Why? Why is there an Ewok? These are the words of Vi Vi This day I shall step from the steps of harmony. My essence, my love, my life split. It is my death my vision scream for. My life that, if spared, will destroy Voss. Learn my words and know what it is to be Voss. I see my own death and I give all that I cherish. I am Voss. I do what must be done. Alright, I gotta shoot first, obviously. So that's a good point. So I'll shoot him, then I'll shoot myself. And then, like, I don't know. As I'm laying there dying... No, 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 no. First thing I'll do is I'll drag myself over this really giant pit with no guardrails for safety rating. Right? And just be like... Ugh. And in that way, I can fall dramatically, you know? Only through war will Voss survive. Real war, not mock. Slaughter. I have seen. It was interpreted. The three declared it must be. I will spend eternity in tears. No, not the sandworm. Okay, so that's a bonus. That's also a bonus. So I need that one. Do one the wonga. Wow. Anyways, <clears throat> Davion asks, "Will you be doing the remaster for Diablo 2? Yes. Uh, it's that's actually something I've debated for a while, because which version we cover will change the the score. It will change the review numbers. But I think ultimately the fact that the new version is just that much easier to stream is going to be the deciding factor there. Yeah, I can literally hit G and just be like, and here's the old graphics. I, allow, I am allowed to record my thoughts, my hurt, my pride. I foresaw the hunger, the drought, the starvation of children. I saw the three must survive. The interpreters gave our food to the three. The people suffered. Our people cry. I cry. To look at them as misery. I did not choose this. Well, that's messed up. 
But hey, you know, everyone's dead. That's the important part. I mean, that makes sense. The JRPG scene has been dominated by Japanese speedrunners for years. There are people who speedrun Final Fantasy games and have such a memory of the step count and RNG table that they can tell you which encounters they will get on which steps. Now, now English speedrunners can do that too, but they have like a notebook which tells them that. Japanese speedrunners just know that from memory. They're crazy. I have studied all the writings of the boss mystics. Your heart grows. Perhaps the Shrine of Healing accepts you. Take this. It may help. Thanks. Thank. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, and then my son comes back like, ha, ha, ha. I am pure evil. And I'm like, well, god damn it. Did I just kill you? You'll never kill me, Dad. I am eternal. Ow. Well, you may be an eternal, but you still hurt. So I'm just going to torture you forever. No! <laughs> I give up. God, stop it. Okay. Now go to your room. I'm going to talk to your sister. To Ula. You're welcome. Your pilgrimage was expected, but surprising. Many disbelieved an outsider could enter. They preferred a symbolic interpretation. I will summon her. Wait, my son has a brother? What? May the mystic see no shadows on you, and the duty to all weigh lightly. I'm not so good with the mushy stuff, so let me just say, he needs your home right away. Oh, no. Is it mother? Devar promised he would tell me if... if... I... I must go right away. Um, that is, honored one, I humbly beg your permission to... Even for we who serve, family is the foundation. Go in peace. Aw, I thought they were gonna resist. I hope I'm in time. Boss are tall, jeez. Yet my son had a twin sister I never heard about. Somehow. I, I was told to inform Garel Moe that the path of pilgrimage has been cleared. That is why I acknowledge you. I guard the proving grounds. The trials lie beyond. A little challenge is no concern of mine. Few Voss survive. Your fate is almost certain. A lot of people have promised to kill me, but I'm still here. Luck. You have walked the path. You may enter the proving grounds. Your sister is on her way. Thank you, Captain. When I heard you were here, I knew, I just knew, you were the one to ask. Please, accept this payment for your trouble. I must make arrangements for a flight to Coruscant, right away. I've got an idea. Let's make a giant indoor area, which you can't mount in. What is this, the frickin' Sith Temple on Drum and Koss? Uh, let's see. Favorite, top five favorite video game stories for purely political intrigue. So let's just get Final Fantasy Tactics out of the way before I think about the other four. This war is needless. There is no conflict. You deny the vision of a mystic. Silence! It is not safe here, honored one. Cape bug! The war you foresaw has there been... it is. That's the cape bug. 
It's even funnier because we're glowing gold right now. That is a negative to gameplay. I cleared the path. I have the right to explore. As you say, honored one, some dare to question. Many Voss will die. There should be no doubt. Your vision started this war, honored one. Will you guide us? I'm no mystic, but I can try. We ask only for a mystic's guidance. You saw a bloody civil war between Voss. After the war ended, you saw the Voss flourish. The Voss have split into two sides to do your will. We battle until one side achieves victory. The other dies. The war will lead to peace and prosperity. That's going a little far, I think. The interpreters are certain. We do what is necessary for our future. At what cost? Countless boss will die. We follow your vision, honored one. Should this war continue? Whatever I saw, I didn't want it to lead to war. The mystics do not always see good fortune. Stop. You do not belong here. The shrine is for the mystics. Your vision was proven false. Maybe I need to complete the trials first. The trials cannot teach the blind to see. You saw the Outsiders destroy Vaska. The Outsiders are here. Vaska thrives. You cannot be a mystic. You must leave. Maybe the vision meant something else. Interpreters can make mistakes. A mystic cannot. I am your escort, honored one. We cannot delay. The mystics have had a vision. The interpreters have chosen you. Your sacrifice will defeat the Gormak. You know what? Hang on. New playlist. I get a say in this, right? Only a coward avoids his fate. A mystic will die. The Gormak will fall. We do what is necessary for our future. I'll give my life to protect the Voss. Even a mystic must sacrifice. You are not a mystic. You do not understand. A mystic sees. You stumble. You will be purged. A mystic's words have weight. You understand. Move on. Learn to focus. Destroy the source. A mystic's words have weight. You understand. Move on. Learn to focus. Destroy the source. Yeah, I've seen the, the cape bug a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So... The reason why it's a negative to gameplay is several fold. First, and most importantly, it is a bug. Bugs tend to sit under gameplay, by virtue of being an aspect of gameplay. Second reason, it is a cosmetic thing, which of course is also something that sits under gameplay, since that's all about choices that you, the player, can make. But then there's the third and final reason. This is also related to the cosmetic thing. It limits what you can choose to wear because if you're trying to enjoy the story and take the game seriously, and then you see that, that's just irritating and drags you completely out of the story. So what several people, myself included, and several of my friends will do, is we'll just refuse to wear outfits that have capes. Oh yeah, and problem number five. That bug has been in since vanilla. That is 11-year-old bug right there. An 11-year-old bug. If I'm being honest, I'm being kind in only giving it one negative. Why is this not letting me? Oh, whatever. Hmm. Why can't I destroy these stupid things? Oh. 
Yeah, the game is still currently going. The last patch was literally last week. It would be easy to argue me up to two on that one. Three, I would probably hesitate on, but two, I could see two. It could, Evo, and I don't disagree with that. But you see why I primarily sit such a bud under gameplay. One negative for every year this bug exists. Hmm. So... Cashel asked me my top five favorite video games for pure political intrigue. And this is going to sound weird, but I'm having trouble thinking of any. I know there are some, but it's actually really rare. Most stories either have some politics in the background as flavor, or don't have any at all. Or maybe they have something like, for example, you decide the politics, like if you're playing EU4, for example. I'm also trying to think of a game that isn't a Final Fantasy game, because so far I've thought of three FF games that have good political intrigue. That's right, you would actually recognize it, Zeiss. So few people recognize Body Harvest. If we ever reviewed it, I'm pretty sure it would review pretty badly, but I have fond memories of this game. Not eligible for this conversation. Um... Uh... Huh. One moment. I'll be right back. I think I see what bugged. I think I can fix it. Crusader Kings would have the same problem as EU4, would have the same problems as Stellaris, would have the same problems as Civ4. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know, Zeiss. <laughs> but if we add Dragon Age Origins, that would bring me up to Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy 12, Final Fantasy 14, Tactics Ogre, and Dragon Age Origins. It's okay. This is either going to be a quick fix or a terrible fix. Give me a sec. Alright, I'm entering the chamber. Nope, that didn't work. Alright, let me actually leave. PoE 2. That's a good one, actually. I forgot about that. So that's why I said I was having trouble thinking of examples, even though I know there are some. Uh, where's the exit? Oh god, how did I get in here? Oh right, I'm in a vision. I can't actually exit. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead and try it, Orkano. See what happens. Let's see, let's see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I'll just have to do this a second time. Tyranny? Eh. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I don't think tyranny really qualifies in the same way as what I would qualify as political intrigue. Um, Prisoner says, I can't remember if Divergent Evolution or Genetic Engineering split the boss. I don't remember either, if I'm being completely honest. What? We are dying. A mystic must heal those in need. Can you explain what happened? Keep bowing. Um, hold on, hold on. That's, that's a good sign, actually, but let me, let me go and see if I can update the quest, because I'm still on the previous step. Yeah, honestly, this game actually has some good political storytelling, too. It's just we're not there yet. Anyways. Uh, favorite architecture in Tor that isn't the ships? That aren't the ships? Honestly, I actually really love what they do with the Alderanian architecture. It does look awesome. Not just in, in the Alpine territory, but, you know, the the building structure and layout, highlights, etc. Um, uh, 
I think I'm actually gonna stop there because my next best guess would be. Oh, it worked. Wait, no, it didn't. Damn it! I, I got excited for a second. All right, hang on. Let me let me try something real quick. I got another idea. Got another idea. Latario says, Atten was told by the Jedi the reason he's so good at killing Jedi because he was force sensitive. Does this imply that even the likes of Jango Fett and the Bounty Hunter Turtles are force sensitive? Uh, there's a lot of varying opinions on that. I happen to be in the no it doesn't camp, but not really because of logic, more because of preference. I don't like the fact that all right, whatever. Let's just go and advance the quest. Worst thing to worse, I'll just do it again. Whatever. I prefer the fact that, you know, the Jedi aren't super amazingly awesome balls. And I also tend to lean very heavily into the crutch theory, which is something a lot of fiction has. A super amazing, powerful wizard. 14 hit points. You know what I mean? That being said, there are quite a few lines of thought that lots of non-Force users use the Force all the time, Han Solo being the most obvious and common example used. Crutch theory. You have superpowers, so you use them so much they become a crutch, and you actually are worse off than you otherwise would be. So we get in two? Whoop! Uh, I guess Suikoden two is okay. Yeah, they just chalk it up to luck. Exactly. Or over-optimization. Yeah, it's a bit of a min-maxing, except in lore rather than in gameplay. Pretty sure you won't die. Thanks, Gus. An example outside of Star Wars? Harry Potter. An inordinate number of wizards rely on their magic so heavily that they are actually weak to other lines of thought. Um... This way, I guess. Also, and the example I just gave, Dungeons and Dragons, or to be more accurately, Forgotten Realms. Don't for, don't mistake me, a properly prepared, properly equipped wizard is a death machine. But, it is easy for most wizards, especially normal wizards, aka the majority of wizards percentage-wise, to rely so heavily on the fact that they can cast a couple of spells to ignore the fact that, you know, everybody else can do stuff too. One level 5 fighter will absolutely destroy a group of wizards. At low level wizards. That's ignoring the fact that numbers can be beat a lot of things in Forgotten Realms. Well, I can see the door. Yeah, and now if a wizard does get to be high level, well, that equation flips a little bit, but that's not what I'm talking about. Rest a moment, outsiders. You are not mystics. Your survival is impressive. It was no. It's my ultimate enemy. A Gormak dude with a big gun. In lore, wizards that get to the level of being able to cast just level 7s are mean. And by sheer virtue of having reached that high level, it is naturally implied in lore that they are smart enough to take advantage of what they've got. We had the key bug for a second there. Did you see that? There's a reason why there are so few wizards who get past level 10 in lore in Forgotten Realms. I mean, I'm pretty sure we could literally list every level 20 wizard in Forgotten Realms on two hands across all of history, I might add. 
I got like a four off the top of my head. Well. We'll do one last attempt at just kind of brute forcing this. If this doesn't work, we'll reset the quest. This is primary, by the way. This is blocking progress, so... Listen, if I'm not trying to kill a wizard, I'm doing something wrong. Oh, I can't even interact with it now. Look at that. I literally can't interact with it because it's not my world. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to do... Ah, screw it. I'm just going to... I'm just going to reset the quest. I'm just going to reset the quest. Um, which is... Uh, this one. The trials. I can't reset the quest. Okay, I abandoned the quest. Just checking, just checking. Oh, it's too late now. I honestly forgot I was you know, I was in an instance. Be completely blind. We I healed you with Jedi power. Thanks. God. Anyways, back to questions while we figure this out. Um, what is my opinion on flying mods? What's a flying mod, Yada? Speaking of politics, I want to learn how to do politics and storytelling. And I heal you with drugs. Um, that's a really good question, and uh, you'd think I'd be the perfect person to ask that because I, I effectively can't do storytelling without politics. It's pretty much my bread and butter when it comes to storytelling. How to do politics well? You are fit for duty. Return to your yeah. I, I'd say the first step is having an understanding of how politics works and functions. Um, the difference between reality and legality. Uh, trying to maintain excuses and reasons while seeking whatever it is you're actually after. Um, the nature of value, value in territory, value in resources, value in people. Um, trying to understand war's impact and purpose in politics. I know that sounds like a strange way to phrase that because war is actually a very devastating thing and is usually considered a net negative for a lot of reasons. Um, but it's also a tool of politics. It is a tool of diplomacy. At least it can be. That might be a, a way to phrase that. Okay, hold on a second. Let's try here. I thought it was a little closer for some reason. Well, I am terrible at interpreting questions, Disco, so that's very likely. Um, so, here, here's the thing. I actually kind of don't like it when fiction just takes a historical event and then writes a story based on that. But, it is a really good way to get used to those kinds of stories. Final Fantasy Tactics is the War of the Roses, to use a direct example. Okay. And yeah, Game of Thrones, yeah, same thing. So, there's, um... Yeah, another thing to remember, economics is almost integrally tied in to politics and war. The ridiculous majority of wars that have happened in human history have happened for economic reasons. And, of course, you're probably thinking, money? 
No. Economics. Resources, manpower, supplies, rights. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. Can someone share that quest with me? That is a good question, one which I ponder often, actually, Evo. One of my favorite types of storytellings is to say, okay, totally normal, fleshed out, real life thing, but change one thing, right? Just, just adjust one thing from it, right? You know, adding in magic, making it so that the people are, you know, live billions of years, or maybe uh, every time they die, they get back up, or maybe necromancy is common. Maybe it's in space. Um, maybe everyone's actually robots instead of people, so they value different things. One change, a slight variance, and then, all right, how does that change it? Because that's that's really interesting to me, and I, I think a lot of good storytelling comes of that. Hey! Thank you. So, what if the War of the Roses happened while ancient demons were trying to bring back their demon queen god thing. There you go, there's Final Fantasy Tactics. And I will admit, and this is one other little tidbit I will give here, one of the best things you can do to make your setting or your story feel more believable, more fleshed out, more interesting, especially political intrigue stories, Aim for mundanity. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that a little bit. Why are we just... Oh, that's why. So... Any story can have grand cosmic powers and giant... You, know, you lift mountains and you crush spaceships and you destroy planets. All that's cool and all that. But if you really want to make a, a, a political intrigue story, do a story about how you can use magic to preserve food. And only certain mages can preserve food. And they have a specific spell for it. Think about the impact that would have on a setting. Maybe they have the ability to create a large portal between two spaces. But it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And multiple mages need to do that. But they could do it large enough to fit, say, a boat through. Mundane stuff. Everyday stuff. Utility stuff tends to be just a little bit more understandable, more relatable, and that adds that extra little bit of flavor that political stories really need. I was going to say, Triangle Strategy is a recent uh, strategy RTS that came out, or excuse me, RPG that came out, where the primary conflict is centered around salt. Because all the salt is controlled by the religious faction whose name I can't think of right now, forgive me, but... And that just forms the, the nature of that entire of everything going on in that plot. Because the moment you add that one little variance, you have a huge domino effect of so many aspects of culture, of society, of economics, of trade, of politics. That's my advice. I know it's terrible. I apologize. Please don't hate me. I mean, honestly, salt is still a precious commodity. It's just not in the same way. I'm going to be skipping some cutscenes here. Yeah, imagine a mage... Let's go back to the mundane thing. Real life, modern day Earth. But a mage comes along and says, Hey, I have the ability to... Hey, I don't have the capo. I have the ability to create water out of nothing. Infinitely, but I can only do it so fa so fast. Is that I'm just gonna skip through this. Yeah! I damn it. We have so. Here's a really dumb one. If you want to go as in in one direction, Sometimes if you want you to, to on this. Maybe you have a setting in which there are no natural seasonings, right? No herbs, no nutmeg, no salt. 
I'll give it a move. You are I'm gonna move. And into this environment, someone discovers, you know, pepper. Let's think about that for a second. Ignoring the obvious value and benefit that would become in certain circumstances, let's think about what that would do to people who've never tasted seasoned food before. Imagine seasoned food becoming a luxury, becoming a polarized element. Imagine the counterculture that would come up of people who insist you don't need seasoning in food. Can't you see? I'm a Jedi! Yeah, actually, honestly, in real life terms, this happened with chocolate. Then we could add magic to the mix. Anyways, I'm sorry, I'm getting way off topic here. Is this is any of this helpful, Evo? You can tell me the truth, it's okay. I, I accept how stupid I am. Uh shouldn't I? Uh, uh I mean you're right, Crazy Norse. Wow, Orcano. So this I'm going to give this quest a bug. If this is bugging this hard, this consistently, this individual quest deserves its own bug negative. This is nonsense. Do you notice how mine appears to be bugged too? I'm supposed to destroy those things. I can't interact with them. I cannot interact with these things. Yeah, in MLP, there's a wonderful scene in My Little Pony where magic has been drained from the area. And so the there, it's, it's a casual sideline, but Rainbow Dash mentions that the food they brought with them on the mission has spoiled... Now, that seems like such a small thing, but think of how, how much that implies. Think about how much that says. Oh, was it Applejack? My bad. Think about how much that says. Because that implies that they consistently use magic for preservation, probably on a large scale, and probably have done so for all of their lives. And then, that's gone. That is a wonderful bit of world building there. Okay, so yeah, let me... Let's reset. Let's reset this stupid thing. Reset. Yes. Abandon group. Yeah, let's just... Let's leave group. Do this completely solo. Because this is very stupid. Yeah, I wasn't even going to talk about the mythical creatures in Tartarus who turn back into normal animals. Which is hysterical and horrifying in its impl 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 implications. Blah. Thank you, Venters. I will jot that down. This war is the triangle strategy. You are Anyways, could a warrior cast magic in the Warcraft universe in lore? Yes. 
Magic in Warcraft is a learned skill. Well, let me walk that back for a second. There's actually a lot of different schools and fields of magic in Warcraft lore. How you learn all of them actually varies from school to school. However, there is nothing that actually prevents you, a warrior, or even a farmer, from learning how to become a druid, warlock, priest, uh, or mage, I would say. Now, you'll notice I left Shaman off of that list. That's because Shamanism... Shamanism in the Warcraft setting is all about having a external source that provides you a lot of your power, whether it's uh, ritualistic from the elements or whether it's from spiritual ancestor ancestral magic, as I like to call it. Now, that doesn't prevent you. Quite the contrary. A warrior, you could totally become a shaman. But the point is, you can't do it on your own. Whereas all the other ones, you could just learn and figure it out for yourself. If you had the te teaching and the training and the aptitude and the time and the years and blah, 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 blah. Very much so, yes, Blade Javal. And that's especially true. Some of you may or may not know this. You think Warlock and you think, oh, I'm evil. But actually, in D&D, &D, Warlocks are just mages who draw their magic from a specific patron. Which can be all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be anything evil. Sarura is correct. You are in completely reliant on your patron to use your spells. And if the, that patron, whatever it is, decides to take your powers away, sucks to be you. Yeah, the warlock I've created as a backup option for our D&D campaign is actually specifically a follower of an angel of Bahamut. So, uh, you know, good aligned. Obviously, because it's because it's the character of mine. Sorry, Bahamut. Anyways, <clears throat> so I never understood what flying mods were. Help me, Yada. You're my only hope. You can also worship old gods or undead or a particularly intelligent sword if you wanted to. I'm not making that up. That's a real thing. I thought about the sword one. It is very hard to multi-magic, yes. Have I ever played an evil-aligned character? Like in a video game? I feel like I've answered that one. Or in D&D. Oh, that is to say, P&P. A mod that lets you fly in a game that, that doesn't have flying. Okay. I don't think I've ever encountered that. So, I don't think I can actually give an opinion on that, because I've literally never encountered it. We are dying. A mystic must heal those in need. I just got here. Bring me up to speed. Keep balance. Take lives to save ours. I've been looking for some trouble. Is this it? What is the? What are these lines? Uh, if no clip counts, then no. I no clip all the time. Are you kidding me? Go downstairs, duh. I have played Skyrim, but I've never played a flying mod for Skyrim. I have played the thing where you could fly around on the dragon, but that's like the Dragonborn DLC. So that's whatever. Yeah, it really sucks. That's the best part. Should have been awesome. It turbo sucks. What historical figures from the BC era would qualify as chaotic evil, in your opinion? Uh, you mean in real life BC or like Burning Crusade? Those are two very different things. Or are they?
Sonic Frontiers is sticking to a small cast of characters. The Sonic Adventure 1 crew. To keep the story more focused, if you could choose one character to be in Sonic Frontiers other than the crew to be written by Ian Flynn, who would it be and why? Because this is a vision, so they need to show that we're in a vision, Alex. And yes, I'm a smuggler, having a vision with the Voss Mystics. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. This doesn't really fit with all classes quite the same. This is actually a good quest to do on an agent, though. If I'm remembering how this works correctly, which I believe I am. Okay, real life BC. Well, I'm going to give you the answer you don't want, which is, I have no idea. I haven't been around back then yet, so I can't really judge people I've never interacted with. Fear me! At least not with that level of distance. Also Caesar. Alright, so. Don't aggro me. Don't aggro me, bro. Sorry. Don't make fun of that. It's a terrible scene. Um, A character to add to Sonic Frontiers. See, I don't know who's in Sonic Frontiers. But my first thought, knee-jerk, is um, Amy. Like, can we make Amy an actual character, finally? Like, can we do that? Please! God damn it! You surprise us, outsider. You are not a mystic. Still, you persist. <sighs> the trial's ended? Or is this just another test? The last. Only a mystic knows what comes. They protect Voss. The mystics face our enemy. They become worthy. Why is Big in that? Boss are neutral. Who are your enemies? Gormak. I mean, I know the real reason Big's in. It's because he's the meme character. We gotta have the meme character, right? There's a reason he's such a crowd pleaser during all the GDQ events, too. This is a really annoying quest. Well, that's a good question, Trehexia. That's pretty much what I was asking earlier, too, if you're paying attention. Um, anyways, um... But if I had to add someone to Sonic... Yes, it absolutely does, Crazy Horse. It's a very natural build-up through Act 1 into the payoff of Act 2, which leads into the conclusion of Act 3. It's pretty well done. Ugh, screw that quest. I'm drawing a total blank here, Dimashi, on Sonic characters I would want to add in. Maybe Mecha Sonic? Or Metal Sonic. I forget which one's which, but it's one of them. What are you wearing? Is that... Why? 
Why not the Tyranids? Because they're not a Sonic character, Alex. You have done well. I'm Jorda. I observe potentials. The trials are perilous. Few survive. What are the trials supposed to teach us? The first trial weighs a mystic's words. The second, their focus. The third, a sad truth. A mystic must take to give. One much like a mystic now protects the Voss. The trials end here. I'm honored to have completed the trials. One lesson remains. The trials have given you insight. A vision. I thought only mystics could have visions. A mystic will see. The vision is yours. These ancient tablets guide a mystic's thoughts. Meditate. Focus. You will find what you seek. Clear your mind. Focus. Must have all the power. I must rule this galaxy! Er Maybe you'll kill me. But not before I show the galaxy that you're a traitor. What, am I supposed to guess? Wouldn't hurt you to think about it. You like that? Because that's the, the, has ended. the second appearance of Rogan in this entire game. Cape! Look at my cape! Oh my god! I need to know what my vision meant. A mystic can only see. Our visions are certain. We choose our response. The trials have ended. Farewell, outsider. Well, anyways, that quest sucked. And that was actually one of the most disappointing class-specific visions I've seen. And I've seen a lot of those visions. Like, kind of all of them. That's, that was just, what the hell was that nonsense? Ugh, I need some Mega Man to recover from that. Hang on, let's, let's get some Mega Man going here. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Oh, yeah, there we go, there we go. Just drain the stress away. So. Have you seen Empire of Corpses? Uh, no, actually. Sounds like a cool story, though. What if the smuggler story was Tales from the Borderlands? Yes. How do I suggest you create a spicy broth or stock? Well, you could add spice to it, but hang on. What kind of spice do you want? Because that's really the question. And there's a lot of different directions you could take that. For example, if you want something that's going to be spicier than you think, but has a really good kick to it, straight up black pepper in large quantities is a really good take for that. Um, one of the things I used to do when I was making chili regularly was I wouldn't add anything other than black pepper as seasoning. And people were like, that's strange, but then they tried like, oh, this is really good. Stuff like that. Um, as I've said many times, you can also add cinnamon to something else, which will accent and accentuate the spice, whatever other spice you use. You can also just literally chop some jalapenos in. Make sure to chop them. Unless you get to soak it. You want the you want the seeds to really get that in there. Let's see. Nope. Not where I want to be. Where am I? Oh god, where am I? I do have a port for the class quest. I should probably go and just use that. I was trying to go back to this area, I think, but it looks like it's not even here. All right, whatever. Let's just go here. Moving on. Um, how would you feel about overtly evil characters in political stories? The Baron from Dune, for example. Okay, so adding, let's call that what it is, adding a hate sink character is always something you have to be very careful about doing. Because, and we've talked about this before, you need to have, you need to have proper fleshing out of the character. You will irritate people by that character's existence one way or the other, and you need to have some kind of proper payoff for their purpose in the story. Whether that means they get their comeuppance, or whether it means they win everything, or maybe they defeat themselves, it depends on what you're going for in the narrative. Bamba. You sent him to me? You think I want a bunch of Voss commandos here? Captain is innocent. They said I believe a lie. Well, don't shove him off on 
Hi. How long have you been there? Let's get you out of my shop before anyone comes looking. You better not be thinking throw me to the Sarlacc to save yourself. Oscar, I had considered it. Jella laid her groundwork well. The adjudicators believe you lead the smuggling ring. Why? Manhunt will continue secretly to avoid alerting accomplices. They haven't told Senator Dodonna, at least. You got a good thing with her, huh? To clear your name, you must catch Jella Renicky trading with Gormak. Imache. She and that creepy Zack guy are the only ones that Gormak don't shoot on sight. They both have their own hideouts down in Gormak lands, but there's no easy way to get there. Does that mean there's an insanely hard way? There are options, Captain, but you'll want to think them over carefully and pick your favorite. We might be a while. Tell Scratch your decision. I must speak with the adjudicators. I was lying. There's only one way to get a Jello. But Loki wouldn't be happy if he knew what I'm doing. This is gonna upset me, isn't it? If you survive, you'll have a great story to tell. I've been trading with Gormak Zack and his people on the side. I can send you with their next shipment. That sounds like a terrible thing. Good dad, I think it's Gormak scan for life forms before they let any uh, supplies in. Okay, but if we have no life signs, wouldn't that mean we're dead? All right, let's hear this wacky scheme. I got equipment here to freeze you in carbonite and then release you on a timer. You'll thaw out in the Gormak Zack's home base. Zack's your best shot at finding Jala, and this is your chance to take him by surprise. Load me in. Go to my carbon freezing chamber and activate it when you're ready. I'll bundle you inside the supply shipment. If you make it back alive, you'll have to tell me what it's like. I've never had the guts to try it. Hi, whole population of Florida. First of all, I'm a little nervous if the whole population of Florida is watching me. Good God. Oh, is that even the Everglades? But yeah, uh, we've actually streamed Tor a few times. But uh, this is our full tour review. We're covering everything. So this is our second character so far. And we're covering all the Republic stuff on this character. Uh, next, hopefully tomorrow, we'll go ahead and start our Jedi Knight. And then uh, we'll go ahead and move forward to Consular. And then we'll switch over to the good side, a.k.a. the Sith. No, Zeiss, because I already did Trooper. Yeah, then we'll hit the expansions. That'll be new to me. You. One and a half, actually, Crazy Norse. Oh. Mm. Thanks for helping me up. Aren't you trying to kill me? I offer peace. Forgive me. I did not know what Jella intended, though I would not have opposed her then. You were helping Jella to try to get me executed. What's changed? Jella has gone too far. I came to this world to help Rogan. Now, the Gormak are my family. I will do nothing to hurt them. You're not both working with the Gormak. That'll make a Lokir's day. Rogan did well for my people. He brings new weapons, new food. But Jella goes behind his back. She is trading with Sith, and they demand what all Gormak are forbidden. What are Gormak forbidden to do? No Gormak enters the Nightmare Lands. The creatures there are twisted mutants. The Sith will only trade for them. We refused. But they said the mutants would be powerful weapons with our tech. Jella agreed. You need protection. Is that what this Let's Be Friends thing is about? Yes. Everything that walks into the darkness is consumed. Body and mind. Those Jella took with her were corrupted, changed, destroyed. They are no longer Gormak. Brains. 
Burns. Oh god, they have Warframes? Be a little more careful then. Gus, what are you doing back there? Thank you. Those who live, live because of you. Stop, Jella. Those she leads turn into ones like this. By a strange coincidence, that's just what I was planning. In Jella's lair, you can learn her plans. Destroy the followers she corrupted. Can I hope Jella isn't very popular? She took many. I don't know who survived. But there is a back entrance. I will give you passcodes to her rooms. Talk with the wretched Voss when you are done. They already man a path to the Nightmare Lands. I will seek shelter with the Exchange. While I'm here, my family is still a target. Yeah, we've gotten a little bit off the beaten path here, Drithon. By that, I mean a lot off the beaten path. Jeez Louise. So. <clears throat> moving on. Well, because it was in Star Wars Pancake, so we have to keep doing... Listen, we've talked about this. Is that a bonus? That's a bonus. Don't care. Peace! Smell you later. So. Um, Evo... Uh, er, nope, hang on. So I, ne I never actually finished answering Cashel's question. I will admit, I tend to like flat evil characters. But that's because they're usually written well and or done well within the story they're in. Um, several people mentioned Rendon Howe. Hang on, music. But also, just Voldemort as a more famous example. Sauron would also qualify. There's also characters like... Um, Of course, I can't think of any all of a sudden. Megatron would qualify. Palpatine would qualify. You know, just, just... Uh, Shao Kahn, thank you. That was the other one I was just thinking of, because Mortal Kombat 11. There's something... No, Dukat isn't really the type of character I'm talking about. Dukat is a nuanced and multifaceted character. I'm talking about flat evil. Luca Blight, that's another good example. So that type of character can and has been done well, but in almost every case, if you're going to do that kind of a character, you really need to present them well, because those characters work entirely based on presentation, because they don't have anything else going for them. They also tend to be great movers and shakers of the overall narrative, so you can use them to basically change the status quo in whatever direction you need it to, because you don't really need to question why they're doing it, right? They can just do it. Flat evil characters are also very similar to environmentally evil characters, like Lavos. You are the outsiders Lirin Kai mentioned. I bear an urgent message. Stand by. Better hurry up, because I don't want to mute this song. I am Pefakfra of the Gormakas Commandos. The mystics have seen you defeat the Gormak. The time has come. The Gormak cannon is almost complete. Voskar will be destroyed. Excellent. Let's get this super weapon. How did the Gormak get a weapon like that? The Gormak have toiled for years. We underestimated them. The cannon points to Vaska. The Gormak... Seriously, the Gormak are going to win with one gun. will stop the invasion. You will stop the cannon. Gotta have a super weapon. <laughs> I'll bring down that cannon or die trying. Defeat the Gormak. Yeah, I think that's a click. I think that counts. The cannon feeds on power. Also, the missiles. The generators are in Gormakos. Eden Che will instruct you. These charges connect to the generators. The commandos have hidden a detonator nearby. Set the charges, activate the detonator. The Gormak cannon will fall silent.
I'll have those charges set before the Gormak know I'm there. The Gormak protect the cannon. They will be ready. Oscar must survive. Be quick. Call me a weirdo, but what defines a super weapon for me is how it's used in the narrative. That's why I don't think that the the Rakul Plague qualifies, even though it could be argued to be a super weapon. It's not used as a super weapon narratively. By contrast, hey, there's this giant artillery cannon that's going to sway the war. Oh god, please save us from this one thing, which is the one linchpin of the enemy's forces. That's a super weapon. He must be heading to the battlefield. Could we talk first? I'm a doctor. The Voss have heavy losses. We don't have medical supplies. Go get medical supplies. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly, Xavion. I think I could help you. The boss would like to keep this operation quiet. Heavy losses, dwindling supplies. Makes him look bad. Here, credentials to access the database. Good luck. We need those supplies. Cool. I will go get your X of Y. Now, Cashel was asking specifically about ridiculously evil characters in heavily political stories, which is different. Uh, to be continued. Oh my god, speak basic! Why? It's good to see a Jedi here. I've heard rumors your order had reservations about the boss. Understandable, I guess. Not that the boss are bad people, just a little different. But they seem to like the Republic well enough. What's your reasoning on that? Yeah, the boss sound cold and aloof, but that doesn't mean they actually are. A few of them even offered to help me out. There's an old Republic walker out in the wilds, left over from when we first came to visit. The boss volunteered to investigate the wreckage for us, only they never came back. I'm starting to think they walked into a trap. We need the Voss to trust us. We can't be sending them off on missions where they never return. I didn't ask, they volunteered. Probably didn't want a bunch of outsiders tromping all over the place. Look, the boss did us a favor by investigating that walk. At least we can do is find out what happened to him. It's better than dealing with this guilt trip. Here's the location of the wreck. Good luck. Now, there's a character in Game of Thrones who would qualify as the type of character I'm thinking. But I'm having trouble... Remembering the name of the person or the actor. Unfortunately, this list does not include him. Uh, what was the recent Godzilla movie called? It is not Joffrey. Was it Godzilla vs. Kong? Charles Dance. That's him. Thank you. I knew someone would get that thread, too. That's the funny part. So, the character Charles Dance plays. That's how you do a horrifically evil character in a political story. Right there. What's funny is Charles Dance is really good at playing that type of character. Now, don't mistake me. There's actually a lot of ways to do a horrifically evil character. We, we just talked about that. But to fully answer Cashel's question... The type of character that really works for me in a political thriller that is really evil is that type of character. Just unabashedly, unforgivably, horrifically type 4 evil. But also, that's that's a bonus. I don't need to go in there. Um, that's where I need to go. And they're smart too, right? They, they, they have motivations, they have complexity. They know what they're doing. They know why they're doing it. Now, yeah, exactly. Someone who is just horrifically pragmatic. Now, there's other ways to do horrifically evil. Actually, someone mentioned Cartesia. I got a better example. Lord Rifa. So, Cartesia and Rifa are two different types of evil. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much of Babylon 5, but let's just say that Cartesia is bonkers evil, a.k.a. your typical psychopath. Whereas Rifa is, so, 
a character like Rifa is very helpful. This kind of goes back to your question too, Evo. Because one of the most, the easiest things to do, and you don't want to overuse it because it's a little bit too easy to do, but one of the easiest things you can do to make a relatable villain in a political story is make someone who is so greedy that they drift into stupidity. Someone who is self-defeating in how short-sighted they are. And the reason that that's so relatable is because most people probably literally know someone like that in person. That's the kind of thing that you have probably interacted with in your real life. There they are. Where the hell are the bodies? I can't bury your bodies if I can't find them. Where's the fourth one? That's true, Pancakes. So, the obvious proviso to all of this is acting is key. Writing is helpful, but acting sells it. We, we, okay. That's weird, but I'm not even going to question it. I'm not even going to question it. So, someone mentioned Rendon Howe, and I got another one for you. Darth Malak. So, Rendon Howe obviously is horrifically evil, but the actor and the portrayal help sell the role so you don't hate him and you don't want him off your screen. Darth Malak is a moron who has no idea what he's doing and is honestly pathetic in all of his interactions. But the, the actor has so much charisma and force behind how he does his role that he, he sells it, right? He sells this great Dark Lord. We, the audience, buy into it the same way his people do. But now, so someone specifically asked me on my opinion on Baron Harkonnen. So let me go ahead and say right off the bat that I have never liked Baron Harkonnen until I saw the recent Dune movie. The recent Dune movie finally sold me on the Baron Harkonnen. Because they changed his tone, if, you, if you're paying attention. He's not quite the same character in the nuance, in, in, the, in the specific subtleties of how he's portrayed. Um, is this a warp point? Yeah, okay. Will do. Um, that's uh, this one. Hang on. Hang on. I need to untrack a few of these. Why do I still have the Katie Y quest? It's just weird. Um, he's... He's a gangster, but like a very smart one. He knows exactly who he is, what he's doing, and why he's doing it. But he is a full-on crime lord. And I love that portrayal of it. They also go out of their way to emphasize that he's very... Aristocratic is the word I want to use? Yeah, an, an Al Capone figure. He has all the brutality that that needs to have. He's... What's his damn name? Um... One second, one second. I can't think of the character's name. Give me one second here. Vito. He comes across a lot like Vito Corleone. You know, there's that there's that layer of the arist aristocracy completely coding the absolute thuggery. And it's the way that it blends thug with aristocrat that works. Because it's so easy to screw up that mix. But instead, he comes across as someone who is legitimately terrifying. And of course, you know, uh, Skarsgård is a great actor, so he nails the role. He nails the, the, the specifics. Again, presentation is important. And finally, he's also portrayed as being smart consistently. The, do the recent Dune movie actually went out of its way to add details that weren't there in the books or the previous movie, specifically to showcase his general intellect and how smart he was at dealing with situations, which is just awesome, in my opinion. So, for the first time ever, I actually liked the Baron Harkonnen. They also got rid of a lot of the Squick, so that's nice. Not a big fan of Squick. Never have been. Uh, 
Ah. Um. Oh, yeah, I need to abandon this quest. Get this the hell out of my log. There we go. How do I? What is this? What is this? Okay. Oh, it's up top. That's why. It might. There might be Squick in the sequel. We'll see. So, Mr. Morton is someone I literally can't talk about without spoiling, but all I will say is that amongst the villains of Babylon 5, he's arguably not one of them. Oh, good lord. Let's not even talk about the David Lynch take on that. Anyways! So I hope that answers you, Cash. I know that's been like a 10-minute answer as we've been just splitting in and out of cutscenes. Next question. Dr. Winter says, How do you feel about the music of Disney's Hercules? Uh, it's great, and I love it. I love the gospel truth. I think that um, Meg's song is actually the best song in that particular movie. The only song I don't really care for in Hercules is Go the Distance. Look, uh-oh. the roll. Nope. Okay, we're stuck. Okay, we're gonna go down. We're not gonna mess with that anymore. Pretty sure you won't die. Damn. Evo asks, have I ever played evil-aligned characters? And you clarified that was in PNP. So the answer is actually yes. I usually only play an evil character under a GM I trust, which brings that level, the number of people down to two. I have two GMs in my life that I would trust enough to run a game in which I can play an evil character. And you know why? Because the types of evil characters I tend to play, nobody realizes I'm evil. Can you breathe? Actually, it's Sis in third, specifically Shadow Machine. Outsider, Pavthak Fra wishes to speak with you. That's not a PNP game last I checked. Charges Caspi. have detonated. Vosca is safe. The Gormak are vicious. You have strength. Where do we go from here? Come to the Gormakos camp. There is much to discuss. I mean, one campaign we were doing, third knew I was evil. None of the players did. Most of the evil acts I was taking pla that I was doing in character around them, uh, I would I would basically do off camera roles. Like I, I would, I would literally pull out my phone and text third, "Hey, I want to do this. What do I roll for it?" He would text me back, "Do this," and I'd be like, "Okay, no problem." So, by my definitions, I was lawful evil, but by the book's definitions, I was neutral evil. Lightsaber. You have a lightsaber? So, Latario says, Do you know anyone in real life that you think you would qualify as chaotic evil? Yes. Unfortunately, in my life, I have met at least two people that I would qualify as chaotic evil. One of them was biologically related to me. The other one... Oh, I don't need to betray them, Evo. I can get what I want without betraying them. Now, if they don't take the deal...
Oh, I would never do that, Flygant. Too obvious. Everybody watches for players trying to steal loot. Both in character and out. Never try to, to hoard the loot. Same with gold. Let's just do party gold. It's gold. And don't actually, you know, screw with that. Because it is gold. My favorite part was in this one particular campaign. I was trying to convince people. The other party member, excuse me. That it really would actually work better if instead of the incompetent morons who have completely failed at everything they're doing around here, if we were to just kind of replace them with people we knew. And you know, we got along well with those people in the last time. They even owe me it, us a favor. We get some trade going between these two towns. That might work out well. Yeah, when I play an evil character, I play an ambitious SOB. I want power, damn it. Power! I want to rule on high and Sultan! Also, don't be afraid to be self sacrificing as an evil character. It's a great way to get people to trust you. And, there's a great benefit in having good allies. It is time. Return to me uh, immediately. Lord Ratchet comes tonight to Lab 68. I promised him a demonstration of the powers we have tapped before we finalize our deal. With this sale, the Sith armies will be invincible. And I will be the richest woman in history. Uh, no? Do you have any idea how rich rich people get, you stupid twat? Loki, have you heard of a place the Gormak called the Nightmare Lands? The land's dark heart. It is our shame, a cancer that comes from the Gormak's touch. Jell is selling the Sith Gormak modified creatures from the Nightmare Lands. Such crime makes trading in abominations small. No man emerges from the Nightmare Lands sane. Do you know how to get there or not? To enter the Nightmare Lands, go to our commando checkpoint. The manhunt has not reached there. Oh. Okay. But anyways. Did anybody ever catch on to me? Yes. I bet you could even guess whom. I think I'm just gonna... And yes, you have told me that story, Traxia. Yeah. That won't work out. Let's see what this does. Yeah, she picked up on it, not immediately, admittedly, but she picked up on it after she noticed that there was this trend of groups starting to kind of coordinate and organize, and they all happened to talk to me. Well, they talked to the party through me. I found out what happened to the Voss. They were killed by beasts the Gormak modified with cybernetic technology. Cyber beasts? I heard the Gormak had away with technology, but nothing like that. This is planet's full of surprises. I'm going to report to my superiors. Thanks for looking into this. Yeah, kind of, Flygant. I was just doing a service to the community. Am I? Anyways, so I am now a Roman senator. Crap! I immediately kill myself! Oh, thank god. Oh, I should probably read the rest of the question. Hang on. I get... Throws it in place, like you do. I'm a Roman senator. It's 49 BC. Caesar has just crossed the Rubicon. Do you support Pompey, or do you support Caesar? Obvious answer. I support Caesar. Get troops going. Install him as a dictator. Make sure that he restructures Rome under the dictatorship rule. Kill him. Take his place. Rule Rome with an iron fist. Die horribly to assassins. Uh, have my head hollowed out and filled with bronze. And then they sell it as a trophy. Any questions? Oscar's safe. You fought bravely. 
We saw the cannon. Yeah, and then my son ruins everything. First, the Gormak have become bold. Jokul leads them. God damn it. You can still fight back. We have struggled. The Gormak were savages. Now they build cannons, ships. Jokul gives the Gormak purpose. They grow stronger. What are you planning? All Gormak resources went into that cannon. Gormak class is exposed. We must strike. Raid Saw will lead the commandos. You will defeat the Gormak. Your skills seem adequate. You must be an expert on fighting the Gormak. We have fought for years. Many have died. Jokul rules from Gormakas, their strongest stand guard. The Gormak have many defenses. The commandos will clear a path. While Jokul lives, the Gormak are unstoppable. He must die. Sounds like this should be relatively simple. The Gormak have killed many. Do not treat this lightly. The commando strike first. Follow the vision, outsider. This is our chance. Do not hesitate. Enter Gorma Koss. Find Jokul. Go now. Damn. Him. Music. Where the hell am I? Yep, there it is. I knew it was down here, that's why I wasn't warping. Oh yeah, I'd also have tons of sex with Cleopatra. Obviously. Just for the points, really. Alright, so... Zeiss says, I need to create a hate scene character in the Star Wars rewrite. Okay, I've got this, I've got a brilliant idea. Hear me out, hear me out. His name is Tarkin, okay? Now this man is like an extremely immoral jackass. Very pragmatic. To a to a fault, actually. And his whole shtick is that he's evil. Okay? His goal, his motive, is being evil. It's it's great. You're gonna love it. Okay, for real, though. New evil character in Star Wars. That... Not that I'm aware of, Mr. Red, no. Let's see. Eh, I wouldn't make Thrawn evil. I already think he's evil enough as is to be blind. Now, if I was to make a... If, so, okay, hang on. Let, let's, let's split this into two questions. We've got... We've, well, I want to make a brand new character. Original character, do not steal. That's pure evil. And then we have to make... Turn an existing character who isn't evil into an evil character. So, I already know what I'm going to do with the second one. So, let me think about the first one for a minute. All right, so there's a dispatcher. They work in Coruscant, and their whole shtick is that they love the petty little power that they have, because they get orders, and they're and they're like a key dispatch for an entire area, right? An entire section of the city. They get orders that come in, and they can rearrange or adjust or alter those orders however they want to. And so they just decide, and they're just they're just some random person, right? No big person, no big star force power. They're just like, <laughs> and they just they just like having the power. They just like switching things around. And anybody who pisses them off, well, I guess that emergency distress call to your area is gonna be. I will put it at the bottom of the queue. I'll get there about an hour late. Hope you're gonna be fine there. That'll teach you to think that the sequel trilogy is actually good. 
that kind of person. There you go. So there's my original character that's horrifically evil. We could sway that character into a number of storylines. I know they do, Evo. However, turning an existing character who isn't evil into evil. Akbar. Now, if I have to explain that, because that just made so much sense to me that it just jumped into my head immediately. But Akbar makes so much sense to me to be someone who is the pragmatic, cold, we need to win regardless of the cost character. Basically, turn him into, well, an evil type of Thrawn, right? He's already tactically brilliant. He already knows he can go above and beyond. And he pushes himself, and obviously he's dedicated to the cause, but he does not care what means they do in order to make that happen. He doesn't even feel bad about it. This isn't some tortured soul who's like, oh, I had to make dark choices. No, he just does it. Outsider, you are a welcome sight. Yeah, imagine Saw, but smart. Squads here. We split up to cover ground. The Cormac were waiting. We were ambushed. A second ambush might finish us off. Any ideas? Another squad made it farther inside. They reported security fields, weapons, Gormac traps. We lost contact. The Gormac have many defenses. The assaults will be difficult if they remain armed. You got a brilliant plan, right? The machines can be shut down. Camera work. Hey, saw The Cormac! We're captured! Send help! Commandos will not escape without assistance. They know the price of victory. You must strike now if we are to kill Jokel. Uh... No? I won't let the boss die down here. You risk defeat. The Commandos are not far. I will tell them help is coming. We will continue the assault. Move quickly. That's just normal politics, Trax, yeah. Seriously, that's just normal politics. Music. Adama? Uh, oh geez, I don't know, Ross. Um, hang on. True neutral. By the books rules. something up really quick here. No! So, question. We're giving a negative to the camera, right? Never mind. Never mind. I gave it up. I never... I changed my mind. We're good. We're good. All questions do not exist. Death to the living. That probably shouldn't be my generic battle cry, but you know what? Whatever. Anyways. <clears throat> Dr. Winter says, In all honesty, is it bad we don't interact with Rogan or see him? Considering how many villains are hardly shown until they actually appear if they ever do, Rogan's been built up since literally the tutorial. Which is true. And it's been a constant presence, if not personally. How is that influence handled is a different question, but it's definitely there. Yes, a personal connection is absent. Considering the twist coming, it makes sense to re restrict direct communication. Just some thoughts. So, obviously, you eat the cat, Crazy Norse. Easy answer. You got a snack right there, man. So, there's dozens of ways to flesh out a character. And what I like to call negative space writing is certainly a very valid way to do it. You know, write the character around the character, all the things that do not actually involve them, so we can feel the shape of the character in their absence. I don't think they're doing that with Rogan. Rogan. He's just kind of... not that. He's basically a non-character, despite being our main thrust and motivation, 
the entirety of Act 3. Well, a decent chunk of Act 3 and 2. Thank you, Outsider. The Gormak meant to slaughter us. You're welcome. Raid Saw has called for reinforcements. We will fight on. That's a good point, prisoners. Don't eat hair. Hair is not noodles. I haven't decided if Rogan's a negative yet, because we're not there yet. But if we were to just kind of chop the storyline right here, Rogan would absolutely be a negative. Because it's not just the fact that he's not here. Again, that can work in a character's favor. It's the fact that they haven't done anything with him at all. No, Dr. Winter. And I hopefully never will. <laughs> you attack our power generators, destroy our cannon. You killed many Gormak to get here. You bring corruption. You are the corruption. Save your boss lies. You come to destroy us, but I am the greatest. You will fail. I've killed plenty of great warriors. You're no different. I know of you. You come from the stars. You perform foul rituals. I will enjoy killing you. We have fought the boss for years. You have never come this far into Gormakos. Did you think it was skill? I have seen the future. I knew you would enter. I knew you would try to kill me. If you knew we were coming, you would have stopped us. Stupid Foss, you think you're here because you're great? I know how to defeat you. You saved weak Voss from my Gormak warriors. They will get stuck behind Gormak defenses. Weak Voss will send a message to tell you. Rigs up! The Gormak defenses are too many! We cannot reach you! We must fall back! Gormak told us what would come. It happened as he saw. Only a mystic knows what comes. The Gormak sees! Your words are wasted. Let's finish this. Yeah, seriously. I've seen you too, boss. I know how to kill you and your weak warriors. You will die now. Okay. Sell me. Hang on. Let me call in a bombing run on your face. As soon as I stop being stunned. There we go. Anyways! What's it do? You think I'm afraid to die? I am the king! I walk where the Voss do not dare go. I went to the Nightmare Lands. The darkness crawled inside my head. Showed me the Voss. Gross. I see past, future. The seeing is Voss corruption, a curse from the Dark Heart. What's the Dark Heart? The ancient core of the Nightmare Lands. A dark, dangerous place few survive. Most go mad. The darkness of the Nightmare Land steals the reason of some mystics. It could give Gormak a mystic sight. How many more Gormak have entered? There could be others. Gormak mystics! Impossible. Jokul is not a mystic. We will not listen. The truth does not change merely because you don't like it. The Commandos called as predicted. Jokul saw the future. This cannot be denied. We are not interpreters. The Gormak's visions must be judged. You would set a Gormak among the Voss. Show all that the mystics share their power with our enemies? No. Jokul would bring chaos to Voska. Finish him, outsider. Let okay. Jokul live isn't worth the consequences. I just pretend he was my son. You protect the Voss. You are a true ally. The three will decide our next move. Speak with Laren Kai and Voska. I will inform Pevthok Fra of our victory. Farewell. Alright. Oh my god, I have quests everywhere. Um, okay. Okay. Let's do the. Uh, sure, we'll do that.
I mean, I think if that was actually shown on camera, that might work, Dr. Winter. I just don't agree that it was. Again, as of this moment, I am mostly debating giving a negative to Rogan because of total misusage as a villain. Especially for someone who's supposed to be our main villain. A problem the Smuggler Story Arc has in general, if you remember. Uh, I don't have a quest here. Eh, okay. How about that? Oh, that's the bonus. What's that? That's the main. What's that? That's the medical supplies. Okay, what's that? That's the bonus. Uh, let's go get the medical supplies. Yeah, like Skavik is a perfect example. Skavik wasn't a bad character. He was just one note and they never went anywhere with him and then he died like a punk. So that was the end of that. Music. We'll debate it, though. We'll debate it. So... Which do I like better, human-like aliens in Star Trek or Star Wars? Well, on Star Wars side, we have the Chiss. The Chiss are awesome. And on the Star Trek side, we have Vulcans and Andorians and literally everyone. So I think I'm going to go with Star Trek on that one. A single Act 1 antagonist for the characters that live to see Act 2. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, um, Zavion says, do I have any hopes for the upcoming B5 reboot? No. I don't have negative hopes, but I have no positive hopes. It's there. I know what you meant, Devo. I mean, Twi'leks are neat and all, but honestly, I do prefer the aesthetics of these. Let me walk this back a second. If I wanted to see aliens that look mostly alien, I would look at Star Wars. If I want to see aliens that look like humans with slight variances, I would look at Star Trek. Aesthetically. I actually really like a lot of the the makeup designs they've come up with over the years for Star Trek. Klingons, Cardassians, and Bajorans are actually a pretty good example of this, in my opinion. See you around, Crazy Norse. Alright, now that Crazy Norse is gone, let's talk about Finland and how awesome it is. Except for its transport network. That's, that's its own thing. That's that, and then I'm just gonna warp right back up, aren't I? Yep. Boop. Now, uh, let's see here. Have I ever heard of the game Dust and Elysian Tale? I've actually streamed that game. Not re reviewed, just streamed it. Are conveniences like the stuck command a default necessity? Yeah. In a game like this, even ignoring things like, you know, terrain problems, there's just too many possibilities in too many different directions that allows you to get stuck. Having a stuck command is effectively mandatory for an MMO. Sharda, I found your stolen medical supplies. There are sick and injured. The healers will be grateful. The Gormak were many. An outsider lives. Surprising, these will go where needed. I'm actually aware of the White Death. I mean, who isn't aware of the White Death? Yeah, I think I got rid of that. Nope. Are those my boots? Are my boots giving me that stupid thing? They are. Oh my god. Whatever. Alright. Um, so that's bonus, which I don't care about. And that's bonus, which I don't care about. Just this one. Okay, cool. Uh. Um... So, access to console commands in a BRPG are absolutely a uh, a plus to, to the game, but that kind of falls under a different category. That's more like in built-in cheats. And the gradient to which a BRPG will get a plus for that actually is going to vary, because the console commands and the usage thereof varies from game to game. So, like in Morrowind, we probably won't actually give a plus to the Morrowind uh, console command, because it's this obtuse garbage with nothing properly explaining it. But Skyrim will probably get multiple positives because of how extraordinarily user-friendly it is, even if you don't really know things like code. BRPG stands for Bethesda RPG. Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas. And, uh...
the end. That was the smuggler arc. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Correct, Evo. It just refers to a specific style of RPG, popularized by Bethesda. I legitimately don't know where these quests want me to go. But I hate bosses' maps so much. Not as much as Corellia. It wants me to go east, but I literally physically can't. There's a frickin' wall in the way. Yeah, I think you're right, Arcano. The best map in this game? Um, uh... Ord Mantel. Okay. Welcome. Please select an available travel route. Tatooine's map actually does suck, yeah. Yeah, there's some weird guy's corpse there. Alright, so, um... How would I play a chaotic evil character? So, if we're going by the book's definitions, evil means I prefer evil over good, and chaotic means I prefer chaos over law. So, in other words, I have to deliberately be going against organization and long-term structure, and I have to be entirely selfish and, you know, evil in my actions there, too. So, someone who just kind of doesn't really have a long-term plan, doesn't really have a big goal or motive, and is just trying to cause as much damage and pain as possible. That's probably how I'd play that. I wouldn't play the Joker, because I'd be too good at it. Instead, I'd probably play someone really, really bitter, which I'd also be very good at. Stop there. This is no place for outsiders. The Nightmare Lands have been since the dawn of Oz. They hold many secrets. Enter lightly, and you will be lost to madness. So I get a little loopy. Might be fun. You will die. The mystic Kedar created a ritual of cleansing. It is our only protection. If you hope to survive the Nightmare Lands, you must complete Kida's ritual. Will the Voss ritual work on an outsider? It will protect you from madness. Death is another matter. You will need a dark crystal. Several grow in caves throughout the Nightmare Lands. Deadly Veratikai have made the caves their home. Defeat these beasts to reach the crystals. Use the crystal to cleanse the corrupted. It will trap the darkness that drives the mad. How will I know who needs to be cleansed? The corrupted wander blind. They will attack. Be quick. After the corrupted have been cleansed, take the crystal to the ruins nearby. Place the crystal before the ancient tablets. Meditate. You will gain Kida's wisdom. The darkness will no longer harm you. This is almost going to be too easy for me. If you return corrupted, I will end your misery. Follow Kida's ritual. Only then will you be safe. No, true neutral is actually very easy to play well, by the book's rules. Why is this a zone? Ah! I am still on Auras. I should see you off myself. Take this holo recorder. It is my wife's. She is an adjudicator. Bring back evidence of Jella's crimes. It will be trusted. That sounds ominous. What are you talking about? Adjudicators judge crimes beyond the family. They will determine your guilt. You have spoken with Talon Day. He is your best chance to survive. Okay. Why is that? Okay, whatever. I don't even care. Don't even care. Where are we at?
so... I mean, okay, so... Hmm. I'm going to just ignore that question, Evo, if that's okay. Not the Chaos and Order one, the previous one. Because the problem is, if there's something that D&D &D players have argued about for literally about 40 years now, it's the alignment chart. That's why I tend to add that little by-the-book proviso, because the alignment chart as defined by the book is actually pretty cut and dry. If you're on the lifel... Lifel? If you're on the lawful column, you care about doing things from a lawful and orderly perspective. You tend to be organized, and you tend to lead towards organization. If you are on the chaotic column, then you actively try to seek to not be organized, to not seek order, and to actively go against organizations and law and order. If you are on evil row, you promote evil. Or sorry, evil's on the bottom. And if you promote good, you care about good. That's it. That's that's the that's the definition. There's there's nothing else there. I think I need to go over there. I think. Yep, I think I'm right. It's actually not a dinosaur, but it's pretty close, Venters. So someone who is chaotic evil is someone who is anti-order, like actively anti-order, and someone who is pro-evil. And that's it. That's the definition. Whoa! I'm... Hang on. Okay. Thank you, Stuck Command. For the second time on this godforsaken planet... Now, that's the book's definitions. You want to argue that? Go talk to the book, Eva. I don't even care. Moving on. Oh god, it's Corrupted Boss! Okay, questions. Um, uh, so I wake up tomorrow as a senator in the Galactic Republic the day after Palpatine gets elected as Chancellor. First thing I do is I fire my predecessor for voting him in. I have all my knowledge of what's going to happen. What do I do? With no power to back that up, I probably commit suicide immediately. Ugh. And I'm dead. Whew, that was a tough one. But we made it. We survived. Well. That's the next question. Um, on which character are you planning to do the expansions? Uh, my main, which is my Sith Warrior, light side Sith Warrior, Nishia. No, you're fine, Evo, it's just, I'm not joking when I say one of the oldest D&D &D arguments, and I do mean argument, not discussion, is the alignment argument. The alignment argument. And the end, you know what I mean? It's, it's just well-trod ground. As a GM, I usually just eject the alignments from existence. Because I don't think they really serve a purpose as existing. See, I don't actually enjoy arguments. Someone uh, recently mentioned that the purpose of a debate is to win, to defeat the other side. And that's very valid and arguably true. Which is why I suck at debate, because I don't care about winning. I don't like PvP. I like co-op. That... Oh, apparently I should use the crystal on them. Whoops! You can tell I'm paying attention. I, honestly, yeah, Mr. That's a good way to put that. Put it in such terminology, though, to, direct, to directly address you, Evo. Um, the the Joker, as presented in the Nolan films, in Dark Knight, lawful evil. Very much lawful evil. Like, he was a massive liar, and arguably a bit of a hypocrite. But ultimately, he was extraordinarily careful, had a big plan, long-term overall agenda... Yada yada yada. He just screams lawful to me. 
by the book's definition. And I'm going to keep saying that because, again, that's their definitions, not mine. Yeah, you're so argumentative, evil. God, please, stop beating. It's why you keep beating me up every time we talk. I swear I'll be better. Please, don't hit me anymore. Yeah, please. Ah, okay, okay, I swear. I'll be good, I'll be good. Where's the altar? Of course it's outside. Oh, okay. Uh, that's way over there. I'm just gonna hit this button. Anyways. <clears throat> no! Not the whale. No, yeah, exactly, Cashel. Joker gives this big speech about being an agent of chaos. It is a total lie. We could argue a lot of things about the Joker as presented in the Nolan film, but the biggest and most well-presented fact about him as a character is that he is a liar. He lies constantly. It's arguable that he doesn't say much that's truthful the entire movie. Like, maybe 5-10% of what he says is true. And even that's debatable. Where I got these scars. Oh, I'm gonna get dismounted. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. All right, this is gonna go badly for me. Tell my wife I said hello. Uh, no, Evo. Again, the the. Hang on. I'd rather actually read from the book than just tell you, but let's pull up Chaotic Evil for a second here. Chaotic Evil. Arbitrary violence spurred on by greed, hatred, or bloodlust. Typical of demons, etc., etc. Uh, that's actually it. That's weird that that's all they mentioned there for the alignment. There's a pretty good write-up of the alignments in one of the books, the physical books, which, of course, I don't have here. Yeah, lying isn't chaotic. Lying is just lying. Yeah, that's the lab, right? Yep, yep, okay. To the lab. bum ba dum ba -da. Mega Man music, go! Anyways, back to the question queue. Let's see. I had to make a Trek-style show set within Star Wars. Bottle show, single ship, small crew, threat of the week. How do I go about it? I set it during beginning on the tail end of the Clone Wars and drifting into the Galactic Civil War. It's primarily focused on a... I need to workshop this. I know where I want to start with that television show. Because I want it to start on a bunch of nobodies. It's just a freighter crew. Nothing fancy. They haul. Maybe they do salvage. I like salvage. Let's do salvage. And they just kind of like to, you know, do their own business. They've made a lot of money recently oh, during the Clone Wars. The Galactic Empire gets founded. They start clamping down a lot more. And now the crew has to start making ends meet in ways that they otherwise probably wouldn't have. Start dealing with a few people they shouldn't have, probably come grown afoul of the law. Start drifting into the criminal underworld, but trying not to get too far into it because none of them really want that kind of a life. But they need to keep the ship fueled and they need to keep themselves fed. What I can't decide is where I want to take that, because I can think of a lot of directions that could go in.
Well, see, one of the things I was thinking of... Exactly, J-Palm. That's kind of the direction I was going with. One of the things I was thinking of is maybe over the course of the ship, they lose someone. And maybe over the course of the ship's show, or the ship's run, they have to hire on someone new. And that person is a little bit more connected with galactic events. The problem is that could be filled by a lot of different slots. It could be an ex-military, it could be a clone, it could be a Jedi, it could be a dark Jedi. Like a failed Inquisitor. There's a lot of directions you can take that. Oh, that's a good one, former Senator. Like I said, there's a lot of different characters we could have orbit into the crew that are more connected to galactic affairs. I... I think it is Caspian. This is now my highest level character. Hair. are all that keeps the beasts in check. Oh yeah, she's doing great. Without them, they would savage us in a heartbeat. Do not expect me to take your word for... Ah. Oh. It seems you provide a means of testing after all. You! Hi. Hmm. I'm not taking the fall for you. I will leave you to rot. Rogan's rewards mean nothing now. I have found a power mere c c criminals can only dream of. Get him, my pets. Let him see what lies within the dark heart. I like what the actress is doing with that. You can tell that they actually thought about which specific consonants she should get stuck on. Let's do this! We sorry. Plus for we. <laughs> Thank you, Orcano. That was hilarious. Oh come on, she do you see what she did? debating it, Jay Palmer. She's been better fleshed out than Rogan so far. Just saying. Even though she's dead now. Uh, are we, are we done here? Yeah, we're done here. Wait a minute. Evo, have you been corrupted by the dark side? God, that would explain so much. Um... Let's see here. What would be your understanding of chaos and order? Not the book's version. Damn it, Evo! I just said... Okay, okay. My version of chaos and order. Organization versus lack of organization. Like, I, I don't have a better way to put it. In fact, it's hard for me to explain that beyond just saying chaos versus order. I've completed Kida's ritual. The Voss are cleansed. You outsiders heed my warnings. You are better. You have strength. The Nightmare Lands cannot harm you. I am the PC. You enter alone. War rages in Gormakos. I protect the Voss first. The Nightmare Lands await. Do what you must. Congrats, Psychotic. Up top. So, like... Cooking a meal? Orderly. Grabbing something and eating it raw? chaotic. It's a terrible example, but I tend to default to food stuff, so. Jella's dead. 
The darkness must come that the light shine brighter. I will set a hearing with the adjudicators. Uh, maybe I'd better sit this one out. For some reason, judges and juries seem to find me untrustworthy. Really? You should not live with this stain. Ah. <laughs> I don't usually get a clear my name. Of course, I'm usually guilty. Go to the hearing board in Vaska. I will speak on your behalf. They would, Akiva. It's a gradient, after all, not an absolute. Yeah, please select an available. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Because okay, food's actually a bad example. Now that I think about it, like for example, do you cook something for yourself or do you order takeout? Which of those is chaotic and which of those is orderly? The answer is not applicable because neither of those are either. Just getting food. So I'm going to default to my original answer. Order tends to lead towards organization. Chaos lead tends to lead away from it. Ordering KFC is extremely chaotic. Chaotic evil. Actually, the outsiders return. This matter must be settled in Voskar. Ambassador Janik remains at his post. I've been following the developments in Gormakas. You've done the Republic proud. The Gormak cannon is silent. Voskar is safe. We are grateful. You're welcome. Are you aware the Gormak King is having visions? Raid Saw sent word of the assault. His report was... disturbing. The mystics are meditating on what happened. The rest of Voska only knows that you fought the Gormak King and won. Jokul is dead. You spared Voska. I got the feeling you wouldn't like it if he survived. His presence here is unthinkable. Jokul might have known the commanders wouldn't reach you. He couldn't have known they would contact Raid Saw. The mystics agree. Jokul was having visions. Visions would explain the Gormak's military stride since Jokul took over. Jokul would use his sight to destroy all Voss. The visions must end. Visions didn't save Jokul from being defeated. If one Gormak can see, more may follow. Jokul said his visions began after a trip to the Nightmare Lands. Whatever caused them must be down there too. Enter the Nightmare Lands. Follow really? Jokul's path. Destroy the source. Okay. If it's something I can blast, you've got nothing to worry about. You will face other challenges. The Nightmare Lands are a place of darkness. Most go mad. Talonday reports that you've completed the Mystic's ritual and are safe from madness, if nothing else. It's the nothing else that worries me. The Dark Heart holds ancient secrets. We have no guidance. Talon Day will guide you. Find him at the landing site. The Gormak must be defeated. You will return. Her. Is that the bonus series or what? Because there's no follow-up quest. Hey, Cord. Yeah, we're probably going to... Well, we are going to finish up Smuggler tomorrow. We got a good chunk of stuff done today. I don't know if you heard, Cord, we will not be d and d tonight, by the way. If that matters to you. Um. Well, then where... Next class after Smuggler will be Jedi Knight. I look forward to that. Thanks. <clears throat> hey, sure. <laughs> I accept. Laren Kai sent you here to follow Jokul's path. 
You are ready to enter the Dark Heart. The Gormag King came here alone. We tracked him from Gormakas into the Nightmare. You're looking at it, Trithon. There are many caves in the Dark Heart. Jokul entered the foulest, the Dark Hollow. Was he looking for something? Or just exploring? We know this much. He did not seek his power. The Dark Hollow is home to an ancient evil. KFC! All and lost to it. Voss, Gormak, outsiders, beasts. If they still live, they will attack you. A Jedi's limits must always be put to the test. You are either brave or a fool. Yes. The Dark Hollow gave Jokul his power. Find the source. Right, where, ah, okay, where is the stupid thing? I think it's over here. Yes, we walk in. Um, so, Space Cadet follows through on the previous question. You are a senator. Do you have the power of a senator? We're talking the end of Phantom Menace before I got emergency powers. And by definition, your predecessor is no longer around. I mean... God damn it, there's a quest. God damn you. Damn you, sir. God damn you. To hell! No, okay, okay, okay. Quest. May we speak? We have questions. Your Republic is unknown to us. Why have you come to Voss? You ever do the expansions, Eric? Because I haven't. We're all just here to make friends and help each other out. You wish to aid us? Encouraging. And the Empire? What do they seek on Voss? When the Empire sees something they want, they try to grab it. Period. And we should avoid them. The three will guide us, as they always have, but we will remember your words. Interesting. So you know how every game gets better after the vanilla, Eric? I don't... So I haven't done the expansions. With one proviso, today, earlier today, we did one dungeon, which is actually from the very first expansion, and it was demonstrably, noticeably better. Like, just... Immediately, I was like, is this a vanilla dungeon? Because I, I didn't recognize it. Now, that's the only thing I could say for the quality of the expansions, but if you're getting the itch, go for it, dude. You get all the expansions for free if you're subbing, which I know isn't for free, but whatever, you know what I mean. I petition Merev Ka and the Tribunal for the Outsider. The Outsider is accused of trafficking with Gormak. Yeah, let's change You the take this on? Yep. I do. You both agree to all proceedings? There we go. Actually, no, hold up, hold up. Hang on. I'll play this one by the book. You are accused of trafficking with Gormak. Testimony. Quat Drive Yards uh, was the dungeon, Jay Palmer. It was surprisingly good. The recording shows everything you need. Jella Renicky sold the Gormak monstrosities. We must confer. The evidence speaks. This crime is Jella Renicki's. She has been punished. But you have other transgressions. What do you think I've done? We're negotiating with Gormak, entering forbidden territory, and corrupting the moral health of an honoress. You owe a debt. The accusation was trafficking, not... You speak out of turn, husband. It was my idea, honorable adjudicators. These lesser crimes stopped Jella Renicky. Punish me. Dude, you're embarrassing yourself. I got this. You think I'm ashamed of what I did? What's your sentence? You must serve, boss. We will not prolong your stay. Aid our community by making deliveries to our settlers off-world. Lo Kir Ka will provide the details. I will work this out. Meet me at our mutual friend's shop. 250 credits. <sighs> Okay. It's gonna be... It's gonna be hard. I think I can do it. Is that seriously, seriously a quest? To go to Alderaan, Balmora, and Coruscant? Hang on. Oh my god, I think it is. I literally have a quest to go to Alderaan. 
<laughs> I'm actually amused by that. Uh, that's funny. Um, so, um, so, so Space Cadet, you're asking, you know, I am a senator, I have all that power and money, and you're right. Especially in the old Republic era, especially at that point in history, a senator would be stupid connected and powerful, right? So if we assume that I automatically have those connections, why would I immediately bow out? Several reasons. First of all, there's nothing I could do about Palpatine. Nothing. Even if I was capable of outmaneuvering him, which I do not think I'm smart enough to do, even with effectively pre, you know, precognition or pre-knowledge or whatever, even if I was capable of convincing people, which I don't think I do, because I'm not that charismatic, I don't have the freaking force. I'm pretty sure that Palpatine would be able to outmaneuver anything and everything I could ever do against him. So Palpatine's going to win, found the Galactic you know, Empire, everything's going to go to hell, and then he's going to shut down the Senate. There's no winning. There's no winning in that scenario. So what you've offered me is five years of comfy, cushy lifestyle while being a horrifically corrupt senator. Or instant death. Easy choice, honestly. I prefer to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. But why would the Jedi at least listen to some random senator? Yeah, also, what Jedi? Oh, gosh. There we go. There we go. Now... Hold on a second. Let's change the variable slightly. Let's say my friends and family go with me. Now I have a problem. Because now I have an obligation to try and improve that galaxy as best as I can for them. I can't just take the easy way out at that point. So... There's two options, two broad choices at that point. Either a try to attempt the impossible, which is stop Palpatine before he really gets going, or prepare for when he wins. Right? Get some resources, get some people. Try to start, you know... No, no, I, I wouldn't join the Galactic Empire, are you kidding me? No, I'm talking about help get the Rebellion going a little bit earlier. With some, you know, resources, personnel, funding, etc. Yeah, exactly, Cashel. Try to make it so that we can speed up the process a little bit. And maybe try to push back against the Galactic Empire a little bit better. Now, there's a catch there. Because a lot of that would ride on the... Exactly, Blue Hero. A lot of that would rely on the Alpha Strike. One of the reasons the Alliance did was able to exist for as long as it was, was because they were so pathetic. I don't mean that as a dig, I mean that as a statement of, of, of fact. Yeah, Jay Palmer's already thinking in the direction I'm talking about. The Alliance was so disparate, so pathetic, and so ineffective that the Galactic Empire effectively ignored them for 20... That's an exaggeration. For about 10 years. About 10 years. Kem Vol? Um... Hello? Jawais from Bamadaga. I host the You come from the stars, but you die just as easily. Even the Gormak King fell before me. I showed him mercy. You will beg for it. What happened between you and the Gormak King? The desperate are drawn to the Dark Heart's power. The Gormak King was no difference. Those who seek power. No, it's not actually Kem Vol. It just looks exactly like him and has his exact voice acting. But this is some other person. This is just another Dishad. What does Selmakor want from the boss and the Gormak? 
For now they are his prey. As my master gains strength, they will become his servants. The Nightmare Lands belong to Selmakor. The Twisted Earth, the Corrupted Beast, the Wandering Madman. My master controls them all. The Dark Heart cannot contain Selmakor. His power will grow until he consumes the world. Nothing will stop this. I can't stop you, Have but fun. I can't kill you. The power of Salmacor flows through me. You will not survive. I am super incredibly powerful. My knowledge knows no bounds. Oh, wow, I'm stunned. That's strange. Well, I'm sure it's just a temporary setback. Soon I will be able to kill all before... Ugh. Alright, so now Kim Vol's the last to shod. Trapped in darkness for centuries, I'm finally free. You have my thanks. Few challenge Selmakor's servant and survive. Those who do are his pawns. He showed Joko the future. The Gormak King ran screaming. How did this knowledge come to you? A mystic's power was not always a rare thing. The Gormak King sees visions. Beneath his skin, he is Voss. So yeah, still. plot twist. The Voss and Gormak were once one people. I am their ancestor. Jokul was having visions because he's really a Voss. Jokul always had the ability. Returning here to the heart of Voss awakened it. Now Voss and Gormak war against their own. Selmakor feeds on their hatred. If the war continues, Selmakor's power will grow beyond the Nightmare Lands. The Voss and the Gormak must make peace. Peace won't happen until they know the truth. You see things clearly. You're part of a vision. An outsider will end the Gormak threat. You must heal this wound. Tell the Voss the truth, no matter the cost. Just warning you, I've been known to say the wrong thing once or twice. Your words are not the danger this time. They will recognize the truth. You face other challenges. I have seen a little of this new Voss. You seek allies for your own war. The Voss will find the truth hard to accept. They may refuse you because of it. A Jedi is bound to serve the Republic. This war will end in truth or in blood. The choice will be yours. My time to rest has come. Go well. There's actually a third option too, Space Cadet. Me, my family, my friends, comrades. Rather than getting involved or joining up, we could bail. Just straight up bail, right? Um, find some place that has nothing to do with the Galactic War and just hold up for... Oh, uh, what would that be? Like, 28 years? Something like that? Yeah, exactly, Trithon. Just... Use my position as a senator to take tons of bribes, tons of stuff, and yeah, and then just bail and wait until everything blows over. And they're like, "All right, Welcome. please select an available travel." Go to Naboo <laughs> and just settle. You know, not even try. I've got this new invention. It's called an NES. It stands for a Nintendo Entertainment System, and uh, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna go over well. Jay Palmer says, what do you think about the theory that Nolan's Joker was spec ops with the PTSD about being abandoned? So, I'm not even sure that's really a theory at this point. We know that some of the writers that worked on that film 
wrote him with that in mind. So there is tangible evidence of that in the fact that he was designed in that manner. But it makes a lot of sense to me, and it's something I've assumed since I first saw the film, kind of automatically. Thoughts on the Nolan fan theory that Nolan's Joker used to be some kind of government operative? Deja vu. Anyways, are there any RPGs you love from a writing perspective but mechanically are too clunky to go back and enjoy? God, yes. So many. Unfortunately, my, my big ones you just listed. Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and Arcanum. Arcanum is such a clunky, just aggravating game to play, especially if you don't know what you're doing. I do happen to know what I'm doing, so I know the kind of builds I should make, but even knowing that just makes it more tolerable, not good. Yeah, Diablo 1 would probably... Qual Most older RPGs qualify under this. Um, yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics is a fantastic example of this. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Like, I love BG2's story to death. But the game? Ugh. 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 You return from the Nightmare Lands. We will waste no time. The three wish to hear your report directly. I will contact them. This is a great honor for the Republic. I hope you've brought good news. Nope. Morrowind. Guntamir. Nenji. The three. Hey. Outsiders, we have followed your path on Voss. You defeated Jokul. We did not expect so much. Maybe you'll think better of Outsiders in the future. You have not saved us yet. Jokul saw the future. Another Gormak visionary could bring our destruction. This cannot be allowed. You walked Jokul's path. Tell us, how did the Gormak King receive his visions? I'm going to tell the truth. Screw him. Gormak are also capable of having visions. You're one people that split centuries ago. You're fighting a civil war that's corrupting all of Voss. You'll destroy yourselves. You have to make peace. Impossible! Unthinkable! You link us to all that is horror! The Gormak have waged war on the Voss for centuries. Do you realize what you're asking? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, I am quite aware. Please let me pick my dialogue option game. Okay, now the music's changing. Uh, and now we're... I guess that was Orcano's instance. Still is, looks like. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yep. To be continued. Dramatic. <laughs> Whoever's directing this is a master of suspense. Yeah, we lost Orcano. You returned the this. Blah, 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 blah. No, I, I, I caught that. I figure I'm here for a good reason. Gormak are also capable of having visions. You're one people. That's your fight. Impossible. You. The Gormak. You wanted the war to end. You can end it without fighting. No the Gormak are not Voss. They do not understand peace. You forget the mystic's vision. An outsider will end the Gormak threat. By sharing this truth, the Gormak become Voss. A threat no longer. All else has happened as seen. We cannot deny Mystic's vision. Then, it is possible. The Gormak may be our brothers. Everything must change. There's some way I can pitch in? You braved the Dark Heart. That is enough. A Voss does not kill a Voss. All action against the Gormak will be suspended, if we can make them understand. You ask us to join your war. The Voss cannot aid you now. We understand. The Republic only wishes You're you the best welcome. Work in your efforts. There is much to be done. We take our leave. You put the Voss before your own. This could not have been easy. I mean, it was the right thing to do, so. You asked for the truth, and you got it. It is difficult to accept. There's no chance of a Republic alliance, but there's no chance of an Imperial one either. All things considered, we did well. 
The Republic has done much for Voss. This will be remembered. Your part in this has ended, Outsider. You have our thanks. You return from the Nightmare Lands. The three wish to hear uh, you. This is a great honor for the Republic. What? I hope you've brought good... Oh, this is Arcano. Right, right, this is Arcano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, cool. And that was Arcano's version. <laughs> okay, uh, so now I just go to the shell. I don't remember where it is, honestly. Figure it out, I'll figure it out. Uh, yep, the timelines just kind of <laughs> into each other there. Do any of the gods or goddesses in Star Wars exist outside the Force? Nope. Is Galen Merrick part of the rewrite? Very unlikely. I'm not going to say no to anything until we're there, because obviously you're asking me something that I don't know yet, but I have no plans to keep Galen, Galen Merrick in, because why the hell would I? Voss's pri primary absolutely got a positive. I wasn't sold on it, but I do think, especially as it kind of wove through it, it's relatively well written. And I do like the Voss world building, which got a second and separate positive. They do a lot to flesh out the Voss, their culture, their people, and their society. Which, not only do I appreciate in general, but I love being shot at by a Bacillus droid. Would Darth Maul have been common knowledge outside the Order? Very unlikely. Even when he took over his own little criminal empire, he did so quietly. He's just that good, Blue Hero? I don't know. He's that good, I have to have him in the rewrite. Let's replace Luke with Galen... Let, let's just... Wait, let's replace Vader. Wait, let's replace Palpatine. Ah, oh, there we go. That's where it's at. Did the Jedi have any viable options of Clone Wars? Nope. <laughs> um, what game would I say is the best user, user interface for games like KOTOR, Never Winter Nights, Dragon Age, DOS? Okay. So, DOS 2 probably wins that one. Dragon Age Origins is okay, and Neverwinter Nights is is actually surprisingly good. Neverwinter Nights exists in a weird confluence in gaming history. What I mean by that is there's a common tendency. Uh, let's use console games for a second. The NES started, and nobody knew what they were doing with it. So the interface, the HUD, the controls kind of sucked, right? But then they got used to the NES, and so the games got better, and the, and the quality got, be got better. Then the SNES came out, basically the same thing. So it got better and better. So you can track the overall improvement of interface and HUD design and controls as a nearly linear increase, right? Then the N64 and the PlayStation 1 came out, and it was a hard reset because all of a sudden everything was different. And so, we've got this figured out. No, we don't. And they had to relearn everything, right? Part of that was the shift to 3D. Part of that was the new architecture. But this same thing tracks across PC games, too. So, Neverwinter Nights happened right at the tail end of when they'd started to figure out interface design before they'd started to drift into, say, the KOTOR stuff. Because I personally think Neverwinter Nights 1's interface and controls are better than KOTOR 1's, to use a direct example. I'm being dragged for some reason. Welcome back. Me and you seem to have a lot of friends in common. My contacts would not risk hiding me. They say this man knows you. Does Jella live? Nope. Jella won't be bothering your family again. Thank you. I will not see Rogan send another Jella to control us. Would you take our trade instead? Ouch. That'll be a slap in the face for Rogan. The Voss know all about you. You need to lie low. This is not the time for the final war with the Voss. We will not risk it. I should return to my family. Thank you for their lives. We have an interesting way of doing business. If you ever want to sit up in Voss, look no further. Yeah, link me it on Discord, Cord. Strange sentence. I did not think to be so long. 
I wish you a future of clear vision and strong will. I will not be the same. Iduana Shoto. Good luck to you, friend. If that's it, you just... Okay, whatever, fine. Alright, so now I gotta go to Alderaan, Balmora, and Coruscant. In fact, hang on, let me just do this. Actually, wait, where's the where's the bonus? I should pick that up before I leave. Let's see if we can find this sucker. So, uh, words. And yeah, obviously KOTOR was held back by console limitations, but you're just sort of making my point for me. There was a big shift in that era between, again, architecture, concepts. I mean, you remember when the very concept of integrated graphics was shifting over into the concept of graphics cards? You remember how many games were designed to be run software? It was a big shift. Uh, nope, not up here. Um... Yeah, the, I wasn't either. Mega Skull Mon Spock Mon. No spoilers. But that caught me, but... Looking around here. Does anybody know where the bonus series starts for Voss? It starts on the station, doesn't it? I remember sound cards. Hell, I used sound cards for years. Because I happen to have a really good one. But anyways, sorry, I'm getting off topic. My overall point is Neverwinter Nights is one of those games that was at a good point in time. It's it's like Final Fantasy VI. It was right at the tail end of a of, of a generation in terms of development. And it kinda had a lot of the best stuff as a consequence. In terms of just the, the mechanics and functionality of playing the game. And that's awesome. Or put it to you this way. I would have trouble playing Baldur's Gate or KOTOR right now, but I could play Neverwinter Nights just fine. Same thing with FF6, to continue the analogy. You, you want to play FF1? Hell, even 4. There's going to be some issues. But you play FF6, and that's just smooth as butter. Neverwinter Night 1's story was unmemorable. So, if it's not obvious, it's on my mind because I've been going through it recently. It's our current co-op game. That remaster was crap, by the way. Anyways, um, yes, Yada, absolutely. It'll be hard to talk, but I'll figure it out. Nothing. Where is the bonus series? I know there's a Voss bonus series. Hey, let me let me try something. Let me try something. Um. So, Neverwinter Night 1's vanilla campaign wasn't really a campaign. I know that sounds like a strange way to put that, but it was so default and so basic that it actually effectively was just a tech demo. It, because some of you may not remember this, but Neverwinter Night's this big selling feature it wasn't the game, it was the dev kit. It was the fact that you could make your own campaigns and your own mods within it. And they released all those tools free and open for everybody to use. There's a reason that Neverwinter Nights mod and custom campaign community is going strong today, 20 years later. So the original vanilla campaign was just, here's the stuff you can make. And I don't know how to explain it better than that, but if you've played through it, you probably know what I'm talking about. The way they do dungeon design, trap design, town design, quest design... All of it is more of a tutorial on how to design things within the engine than it is an actual campaign in its own right. It wouldn't be until the first expansion came out where it's like, oh, here's an actual frickin' campaign within the game. Good night, Nerezos. Okay, I have a weird feeling I need to actually move on in order to access the bonus series. Anyone else getting that vibe? Arabeth was voiced by actually a pretty well-known voice actor. She's still doing voice acting work. And she's pretty good, too. She's also one of the most voiced characters in the game, so that's probably related. Before I cut off, let's see some other questions here. Um, what is the canon ending for the Voss storyline? I do not know. 
Master, you'll be pleased to know I added the extra... What do I think went through the minds of the Rebellion leadership when they saw the mess the galaxy was, and they officially replaced the Empire? Oh god, there's gonna be so much paperwork in the EU, or... Let's move on as if nothing happened in the AU. Is there a Darth I would trust? Actually, there's several. Depending. Have I read any of the High Republic material? Unfortunately not, I haven't gotten around to it. I'm now- oh, I already answered them. Okay, and that's all the questions. Perfect, so let's wrap this up. I hear you've had some trouble on Voss. Hmm, Captain? Senator Dordana asked me to call. She's busy defending her decision to send such an undiplomatic ambassador to Voss at a crucial time. Any success learning Rogan's business? Rogan's pipeline to Voss is gone for good. I'm sure the Senator will sleep easier knowing that she won't wake up to a cyborg Nexu on the pillow. You've got Rogan in full retreat. He's calling her surviving lieutenants for a war council. I checked into all of Ivory's bolt holes. The one on Tatooine seems to be the one still active. Rogan always shows up to spoil my good time. Let's give him a taste. Here, here. I bet I could get a good bid price to see the look on his face. This is your chance to wipe the slate and call the biggest criminal empire in the galaxy your own. That's another thing that I don't like about what they do with Rogan. They make him out to be some big name Super Doom. I'm not sure I buy that. In fact, I totally don't buy that, so I guess that's valid. Any Jedi Masters I would trust? I feel like the answer is yes, but I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I could see Kuhn. Plo Kuhn. Yeah, no, me too, Blade Traval. Like, we actually talked about this all the way back in Orb Mantel. They talked about... They talked about Rogan, and the way he was designed and built up was that he was a local crime lord, not a galactic level crime lord. And yet at this point, they keep trying to build up this idea that we're making this huge galactic criminal empire, and they're failing at it. If I can rant for just a second... It reminds me a lot of the Inquisitor storyline, which I generally like. But one of the things I don't like about it is they keep emphasizing that you're building this huge power base, but I never felt that. I never felt like I actually had this big power base. You know, you got the one random cult group on Nar Shadda, and a couple of moth moths. Uh, and that's kind of it. You have fun with that, Devos. Thank you, Outsider. You're welcome. Wow, it really wants me to just go. Oh my god, it really does. Look at this. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let's just go to the ship. In fact, where's my story negatives territory? Yeah, exactly, Sarura. Yet another reason why Night is one of the best written stories in this game. I suppose you could say, you know, that's easy to do, and insults towards the storytelling, but I stand by my statement. Uh, Balmora? Balmora. What did I say, Mr. Red? <laughs> Sith Knight. I'd play that. My mage is doing some smuggling. That's true, Latario. You're absolutely right. We become a frickin' Darth. Like, at least as the Emperor's Wrath, we do things as the Wrath. And we should. We're the Wrath. We're the frontliner. As the Inquisitor, we should be the backliner. At least off camera, like you say. I, I, I... I know that what I really want is to have a giant, like, management sim slash strategy game around being a Dark Lord. And I know that's not going to happen in this game. Not only as an RPG, but as an MMO. But at least pay some lip service to the concept and give me the feel and vibe of that. There are plenty of RPGs that have made me feel like I was actually a ruler without actually delving into being a strategy sim. 
I've got an example for you right off the top of my head. Dragon Age Origins Awakening. When you hold court. And those actions have consequences, too. They change, in small ways, several of the story arcs that happen as a consequence. Uh, there he is. She, he, it. Looks like a she. Thanks for the business. May your future be clear, outsider. And yeah, I heard. Sorry, Shadow Machine. I was going to finish this up and then go grab it, but thank you. Give me a moment to get to Coruscant, apparently. That's the next one. But you, I always use my rocket boots on my spaceship. I mean, wouldn't you? Slam into the wall. Here lies the great criminal kingpin. Killed himself by using rocket boots. That's true. In Inquisition, they throw a goat at your castle. Still one of my favorite moments in that whole game. I liked Inquisition's story, but that one really stuck out with me. Yeah, we appear to be being attacked by, uh, or excuse me, with. They're attacking us with a goat. Nah. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Doesn't tell me, of course not. Guess I need to go to the northeast. The space dock shuttle? Maybe it hasn't even unlocked it. Well, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's see if we can get it to unlock in a minute. How much farther are you, you jackass? All right, we didn't do Coruscant on this character. Like, what? All right, we did that on Trooper. I held up my end of the deal. You bring yourself honor, outsider. Loki? Why are you calling me? The last package was received. You are free of obligation. Thank you. I would have been relegated to hard labor for my crimes. You're welcome. Well, Dr. Winter? I'm going to glue a cleaning mop to your hands and force you to clean it up. Okay, so now, let's go back to boss. Yeah, Inquisition's gameplay was not good. I liked the combat initially, and I still like the difficulty design. But the encounter design doesn't really support the combat design the way it should. And it's hilariously unbalanced. And getting rid of the heels was a terrible idea. I can't believe they did that. That was such a dumb move. I know, right, Jay Palmer? Do hard labor. Fly around the galaxy and deliver some things. Oh, God, yes. The Frostbite engine was such a terrible idea. The Frostbite engine can do its own thing quite well. RPGs are not its own thing. Yeah, you should. Arcane Warrior Mage. Or the, what is it, the Reversal Mage? I can't remember what it's called. Oh, is that... is that the person? Aha! Aha! Good to see we're putting on a strong Yeah, this person was not here earlier. I hear you've given them a hiding. Incredible. And I'm stuck here in advisory capacity. I get to tiptoe through this week's diplomatic crisis. Lucky me. 
Show the Republic at its best, and you'll do more for our cause on Vos than any act of heroism. If you'd heard the reports we're getting, Master Jedi, you'd want to be out there. The Gormak are moving an invasion force into the Pelothree marches, a stone's throw from the Shrine of Healing. We had a bunch of research camps there excavating the local ruins. The Gormak swarmed them. Our researchers, they barely had a blaster between them. Must be a way to force the Gormak out of that region. We're mobilizing people now, but there's a problem. There's a Jedi Master out there, Master Halicus. Maybe you've met. This Master Halicus thinks the Gormak are looking for something. Something worth raising an army to find. What could the Gormak want so badly? I don't know. It's Master Halicus's theory. I can get you a speeder to Camp Thesh. That's where Master Halicus took most of the survivors. He should know more about what the Gormak are up to, and how to send them packing. Okay, so now I have both bonus series. Excellent. Ugh. But we are a little bit after our cutoff point. Force Apprentice? What the heck is that? Before I cut off, I do want to say shoutouts and thank you again to Orkano, to Shadow Machine, and to Giga Pudding and her poor, poor fingers for helping me get through this crap. We're so close. We're so close. I have to do two bonus series off camera. And all we have left is Corellia. No bonus series on Corellia. We just have to do Corellia. But before we do, hang on one second. Curious is something. So I've been keeping track of planetary scores just for fun. Mostly to keep track of who the worst is. Let's let's check something, shall we? Curious. Give me a sec, give me a sec. So, as of this moment in time, boss is three pluses to story, one negative to story, zero pluses to gameplay, and two negatives to gameplay. Whereas... Uh, that, that may sound bad, and it kind of is, but that's still a net neutral total. By contrast, Hoth is a 2, 1, and then a 0, 9, and Belsavis is a 1, 3, 0, 8. Uh, yeah, on camera, Dr. Winter. I still have to do my job. I'm just going to make it so that you don't get bored by it, so my evening tonight is going to be doing those two bonus series. So, yeah, Voss continues to be... Yeah, we haven't done the Voss bonus series yet. And other class quests can change these scores as we go. I look forward to seeing how Corellia scores. Anyways. See you tomorrow, everyone.